for more than 30 years. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubby's downtown in the old market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats, hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express, pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Na 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 na. Hey, goodbye to busted brackets. Right now, FanDuel is going to let you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, and they do get upset. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now, Nick, new customers, we're looking at you. You can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's right. And we're in the Sweet 16. We don't want to hear about your busted bracket anymore. Make good on that. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com, promo code ZONE. That's FanDuel.com slash ZONE. And bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 21 plus and present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Bets Off. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Crossover is crossover dribble. Same for the crossover. Kyrie Irving crossover in the lane. One of the most famous crossovers of all time. Behind the back, an ankle breaker on Chris Paul. Crossover. Crossover. Double crossover. The crossover continues to evolve. All right, time for the crossover. We're up we're powered by Everlow Concrete Repair in Omaha. Everlow Concrete Repair. Come. Connor Happer is on his way to Vegas. Did you make it out safely? Uh, they'll be there this afternoon. I have not heard okay. of the. Do we got a touchdown? Plane crashing or anything? Whoa! Like that. Whoa! The whole Josh. the whole afternoon crossover yesterday was. Hey, what if the plane d- crashes? Mm. Well, that's why we didn't send the entire staff. Wow! <laughs> that's, I'm that's, the wow. designated that's, survivor. Yeah, that's smart management. <laughs> um, that's not like that's karma. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, that's what they said. They said, oh, we'll definitely play this on the best of if the plane crashes. Well, so my <laughs> wife said this one time. And so we went, will there be some lawyers? At, at, at my wife's last, uh, her last employer, they rewarded all employees with the trip to Mexico. And every one of them were on the same flight. And my wife said this, and I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind because I got a free trip. I got the beer plus one and it was free and it was Mexico and it was fun and I didn't have to do anything. Uh, She said, this is actually very irresponsible of our management because we're all on the same plane. Not one person is left behind. So if something happened, the company would cease to exist. And I'm like, good Lord, woman, I'm traveling with the state of the union. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, somebody's got to think about these. I I guess. And I guess she was. So maybe she should have stayed behind. If they only knew that there were people that went to Pittsburgh or Memphis over the weekend that to go support their favorite college basketball team, they got on a Boeing plane. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Mm. Hey, have, have I, don't guys, even, I don't even want to laugh right now. Have you guys heard the the bo- the latest Boeing joke? No. No, but, but why don't you deliver what, what their, what their new, slo- start to what their new slogan is? What do you got, Johnny oh, Shredder? No. Boeing. Oh. When one door opens, another door opens. <laughs> <laughs> I approve. It's good. <laughs> you like that one? I did. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Surprised I didn't see that, too, because I've seen a lot of... Boeing's um, been trending a lot lately. So the the... Is there is there any other city in the world where the going out coming back emotions are completely different? Like going to Vegas, you can't wait to get there and you're so excited. Yeah. But that flight, especially the direct on Southwest from Las Vegas back to Omaha, is one of the saddest, smelliest flights. <laughs> it smells like cigarettes. Yeah. It smells like desperation. People are coughing. Lost money. And it's just like, it, it's so sad. And you're you're either hungover mm-hmm. or you haven't slept, 
And yeah. it's like a lonely flight. And then you land back in Omaha and you're like, uh, I need a nap. But going out, you're like, this is great. Yeah. I would yeah. like as many drinks as possible. Oh, by the time you land, by the time you touch down, you're probably at least three shits to the wind, if not four. Nope. It, it is the scene from Swingers. Or yeah, Vegas, oh, yeah. baby, Vegas. Yeah, we're, we're, they're do yeah, they're dozing off a little bit, and then all of a sudden they finally see the lights. They're like, <laughs> Vegas, and then it just boom. Nothing's yeah. gonna top it, but I mean, like Cancun back to Omaha in the yeah. dead of winter. So I mean, that's I, I would I would I would like it. Like to, I would like it to Mexico trips, especially. Yes, you're right, Josh. If you do cold weather time, and then you know what you're returning to, and you're like, good. God. Some might say a honeymoon trip wherever. You're excited yeah. to go there, and then yeah. you realize come back. And I got to spend the rest of what? my life with this person. This what is did I do? But maybe in reverse, Detroit. Now, see, I don't <laughs> mind Detroit. <laughs> why, why are we on Detroit? You're super you're like, all right, let's leave. Come on, what's our flight? Take <laughs> I've off. been to the Detroit airport. It's a fine airport. It's a great airport, and I have not been to the new revitalized downtown yeah, Detroit, like, which I heard is like actually Detroit really nice. Going there and coming back would probably be like the same. I love RoboCop. Yeah, <laughs> old Detroit. <laughs> Yeah, but if you went to Detroit in RoboCop, oh, you would not horrible. like Detroit. Uh, yeah, I'd be a little scared. Red Foreman's just blasting people's yeah, hands. Yeah, Red, <laughs> Red Foreman, Bob Morton, can't get anything under control. Yeah, I don't want to get into it. That was old Detroit, though. That was. So things have changed. That's uh, actually a good one, though, John. Is there the reverse effect? Any other place other than Detroit? Well, <laughs> not Detroit um, now. Where you, where you can't wait to come back, but you have to go. You're like, oh, my God. It's that I'll tell you. It's San Francisco for me. Really? Oh, I can't stand San Francisco. I, I really do like San Francisco. Oh, I've only been once. Yuck. Uh, the problem with San Francisco is it has changed a little bit, like post COVID. Yeah, like it is insanely dirty. Well, like it's, yeah. it's, it's it is dirty. It so on, dirty. It depends wow. on where you stay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't know. Now it's most of the areas downtown, like like outside of where the Giants play. Yeah. Even that area, which used to be really, really clean, and you didn't have street performers, and you didn't have homeless people, and yeah, you know, you weren't confused for somebody trying to sell tickets or somebody that wanted money. It just, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a, it's a city that has some issues. I, I, I love San Francisco, uh, especially outside of San Francisco, um, but yeah, we so we spent more it's less a, time I would downtown. Say it's a though. pain in the butt. To fly from Omaha to San yes, Francisco. yes, it is. It yeah. absolutely so that's one is. Of the reasons. We spent less time in downtown and more. We did the Sonoma thing and Sausalito out just outside. See, that's not San Francisco, right? But we did stay in downtown yeah. San Francisco. You, you so I, I know a, what you're saying. You're not, when you're walking, when you're walking in downtown Sonoma, <laughs> right? No, like when you make your way a, past a, the uh, NASCAR <laughs> track and you're driving through the hills and you get into. <laughs> the city yeah, and it's you're a, like oh this is a nice little quaint small town oh there, there's the wineries yeah you don't have like a homeless encampment it's no. right there <laughs> it's a different world i, I yeah. i'm with you four now, tents we, blocking we stayed, the sidewalk we stayed in with downtown. human feces surrounding oh that them. was yeah this when we say downtown it was kind of crazy and then we made our way to the to the wharf Be, between our hotel and downtown and the wharf yeah that was an experience if your mm -hmm. city is so dirty that there is an app for yeah. people to mark where there is human feces yeah Maybe that, you have that, a problem that says something. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, Absolutely, I, I. It is, uh, and I'm a little bit sad because I really like the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's New York City of the West Coast, but since COVID, it's gone way downhill. I mean, a lot more smash and grab. It's just mm -hmm. it's those parts of it that are beautiful, but yeah, you got to keep your head on a swivel. I'll, I'll tell you my San Francisco story. So I was there. It's been almost ten years ago now for a, a conference. We were staying in the theater district is where the conference was and i was walking down the street just like taking in the sights yeah never been to san francisco before and this man walks up next to me he goes where do i know you from that's a good line and i said uh you don't he said no i know you from somewhere i said now nah, i'm from nebraska man you don't know me you could be a fan <laughs> he goes, you made a mistake yeah. first telling him you're from nebraska yeah, he's like he goes he goes no i never forget a face <laughs> oh, oh no what's this... your badge number oh and i said nope not getting stabbed today. <laughs> you locked me up 12 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you calling a psycho? You should, you should have said, I'm from the meanest part of Oakland that you've yeah, ever yeah, imagined. Right. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> Your badge number. number. I, I would like number? to keep my liver intact today. Thank you, you very much. You do look like law enforcement, John. Thank I you. No, that. I don't. Yeah. You got a little bit of that edge to you. <laughs> yep. 
but yeah, that, that that's uh, that was. I never forget a face. <laughs> oh, that would freak me. What's out. your badge number? Like where are we oh, going? No thanks. Yeah, where are we I'm going out. with this man? I need to get out of here. Uh, Andrew says I uh, went to San Francisco last spring. The four days we were there, saw three dead people and another getting. I'm telling you, man. CPR walking in downtown. Ooh. It's it's bottom ten cities in the country. Yeah, I just we only had one day where we were actually in the the downtown area, and it was I was warned too. So maybe I just I was prepared. Mm. The majority of our our stay and our trip to San Francisco was in the outer San Francisco area, more northern California than it was the heart of San Francisco. But yeah, feces that's not my thing. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Uh... Don't flush the species you're thinking. <laughs> you, well, you might not want the answers to some of those. Yeah, nope. I would We've tra- been trying to hey. get a record. We've been trying oh. to find 100% unity so, on uh, one issue in this world. I feel like that, if, it, if that's so not 100%. Yeah, that's true. I, I, that might be that one, one of those where you put up the poll question, Josh, judge. and then turn off the uh, replies. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's anonymous. <laughs> we don't judge. No, yes. but see, people. Someone's put people yes now to be reply fun. to polls with a reply, not a vote, but a reply. Yes, yes. that's it. Mm. Sipple is a big yeah. fan yeah. of that. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this yesterday. And by the way, shout out to the cargo ship. They put out the May Day call, and they immediately stopped traffic yeah. on the bridge, which mm-hmm. prevented um, more deaths than unfortunately they mm. already have. Did you guys see the tweet? Uh, that the Baltimore Police Department put out, alerting the public to the situation. Is the Washington, what? D.C. mayor okay, got yeah, up, got on Twitter as she woke up, and her response was, oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Her, no. Oh, no. <laughs> like oh replied, dear God, she replied, my heart goes out. Or she anything replied, up. oh, no. What, I mean, what would be, oh, is, is there a worse, like, to her, oh, bummer, man. Yeah, bummer, yeah. oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> or, You're harshing oh, my vibe, dudes. Or, oh, rats. Or as they say up in the Upper Peninsula, ah, crumbs. That would have been the only thing to top that. Of, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Especially coming from uh, like a political figure. You she would replied. Think, yeah. You would have, <laughs> okay, you would so, have like the uh, hearts and uh, you know, was it, was thoughts it a, and prayers. Was it an, oh, no. Some or was TMP it an, going oh, out. No. Oh, no. O-H space N-O. Here it is. How many Here explanations? Yeah, was, was there an exclamation point? Oh, no. There's no. No, it's just no oh, period. No, no exclamation. Just, just. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. It explains mm. that the bridge. Um, has reportedly collapsed within the last few minutes after being struck by a large container ship. Mass, ca- mass casualty incident has been declared with over a dozen cars and many individuals in the water. And she responded at 518 in the morning yesterday. Oh, no. <laughs> hmm. Maybe if you know her. You realize that, that mayors, that, am I that, right? That really, that really tugged, <laughs> that really tugged at the emotional strings. Read it there. in her voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys don't know, but that really got to her. I'm sure it did. I mean, I hope it did. But it, putting the it oh should no. have. Yeah, by, um, by putting the she oh has no since there. deleted it. Oh, she. Oh, but I'm wondering how long it stayed up before yeah. somebody in her office said, "Excuse me, mayor." <laughs> Yeah, that might be maybe at least an exclamation point. Maybe we can craft a better statement. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe a prayer emoji. Can elected Here. officials delete tweets? Wasn't that a discussion mm-hmm. with yes, uh, discussion. President Trump? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Is yeah. that he couldn't delete tweets? Yeah. It, is it official communication or not? There mm-hmm. was a big debate yep. about that. Yep. I don't think we ever got to the bottom of that. But... <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Other things got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yep leave it at that and mm. push down the list of priorities what if, what if on uh twitter you did not have a delete tweet button it was just permanent oh, like it was once, per- once you hit send let's it's it. it's out there yeah, let's do it, it. let's yeah. rip it and go yeah it's amazing though some people the ability to to grab it before it gets to but if you're if you're someone oh, screenshots live forever yeah if you're yeah, someone so who has a, a large following every time if you put out anything that's remotely stupid that screenshot it immediately yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's so really impressive Essentially, for people with notoriety and a large following, there is no delete button. No. I mean, that already exists. Yep. Like, I can't believe I'm reading this screen grab. Keeping this one. For you and this me. Will live forever. I'm just thinking about it. All, all 400 of my followers, none of them are screen grabbing my stuff, I don't think. <laughs> when, uh, you see what John Schreiner just said? Oh, hell yeah. 
Who's John he, Schreiner? He's never lived that. Wow, I never his, forget a face. Yeah, what's his badge number yeah. again? What is my badge number? <laughs> um, Forgot to screen grab it. <laughs> seeing if uh, P. Diddy has a Twitter account. Oh, oh uh, dear. Well, he has so many names that you would yeah. need to search. Is it uh, just, is there the more serious one of just Sean Combs? Puff Daddy, Sean Puffy Combs. Turns out Puff, maybe, oh, he does. P. Diddy. Maybe those name, maybe each of those name changes to avoid law enforcement. Could be. <laughs> no, he's just he's uh, a, love on Twitter. Love. At Diddy. At mm. Diddy. 14.9 million followers. Oh. Hanging out in Antigua. Um, let's see yeah. here if he, no, nope, he hasn't, he hasn't tweeted since uh, February 4th. Since the, oh, Probably uh, wise. Well, let's see if he's liked in. anything. We'll break. You know? <laughs> Wouldn't this be great if he was liking all those stories about yeah. him? <laughs> maybe, maybe he's one. on. He's on the run. He might not even be in this country. Like, like. I'm I, I, as you guys know now. I'm always a big fan when someone uh, quote tweets it with the eyeballs. What if he eyeball tweets one of his his own stories? <laughs> of <Biden>? <laughs> <laughs> it's very cryptic. Yeah. Big if true. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> On his own account, think of true. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that one's going to end very well. No, doesn't seem like it. No, I think this is uh, there's more than just <sighs> ah, you know what. There's but you know what? Linking. At least it's on brand for March Madness that one of his drug mule is a former Syracuse basketball player. <laughs> if you want to ask me, I thought it was a Devendorf. That'll bring Syracuse Jim race. Beheim into the conversation. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I didn't know anything about this. Why would you even ask me? Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's my Jim Beheim. Been Pretty working good, on. actually. <laughs> Very, very I, we good. can tell. Josh. We can tell. <laughs> For a guy who he just and he hates the media now. He's now he's giving you some Monday breakdowns on Sports Center, which is it's unbearable. It, it's always funny. It's those, the coaches who like just railed against the media and hated the media. After they're done coaching, where do they go? Yeah. Oh. Right to the media. We got a seat for you. Make a lot of money. Low pressure. S Nick oh. Saban being on pregame shows is like the ultimate. What is going on here? <laughs> right. Th this is a guy who was. So just outright mean to the media sometimes. And here he is sitting on a pregame set talking about football. Yep. I thought he would got, got better like the last couple of years with the media. They mm. took him. So he oh, went to, yeah, say, say, he went to media he training. Yeah. Um, because that's when he started looking into the camera during interviews and it was creepy. And he was doing it well. Cause remember he, and that <laughs> well, was right around the time he was doing the college football playoff yeah. when they weren't in it. He was in yeah. the national championship game coverage. Um, like during the COVID year, which they won the title, he he seemed to be more likable. Yeah. But he started the looking into the camera. Like they'd go to a sideline halftime interview, and instead of looking at the reporter, he'd look right at the camera, and people were like, I'm freaked out. Yeah, they're like, what, uh, <laughs> seeing the whites of his eyes. I don't like this. I mean, there's just been so many examples, like Rex Ryan yeah. on, oh, on yeah. media God. coverage, right? And that guy hated and, reporters. And why? As far as him on the media, why? Why? He he still. If you listen closely to certain struggling organizations, he's still lobbying to be a coach. That's it's oh th sure. That's where it, he's. It's it's frustrating. It's annoying. I can't stand it. It's like, dude, either get a job or just get out of there. Because th that that's all your commentary is based off of. Well, if they had a good defensive minded guy here, or if they had a better coach, if you're a coach, what are you thinking? Oh, because you would have done it better, right? What? Okay, Rex. Uh, it looks <laughs> like it's annoying. official that uh, Tomanaga will not be back in Nebraska. He did tweet, thank you. Oh. Yes. Oh. There was somebody that uh, was one. trying a campaign to keep Tomanaga at Nebraska because they were going to go to the NCAA that uh, it was a, uh, what do they, what do they officially call it? A. Like a hardship obstacle? waiver? Hardship yeah, waiver? Hardship waiver. Hardship. Hardship yeah. that he didn't know any English mm -hmm. when he got to his oh. junior college. And they were going to use that as a hmm. a reason for the NCAA to give him another year. Okay, so he's like, you know what? They tried to get in touch with Tominaga to help him. Well, I, I'm the NCAA sure is like, like man, we're good. The NCAA is like Oprah with waivers right now. Like, that one might be a little bit tough. Because they yeah. can't really stop it. <laughs> We no, this, yeah, because now they get sued. We had this guy that came to the U.S. and he didn't speak in English. He went to this junior college, and did you see that junior college? That was a hardship. He should get an extra year at the Division One level. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, did you this, see the ooh, players he had to play with his first year at Nebraska? That was a hardship. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really that good. would be a great. <laughs> yeah. That would be a great waiver. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I played on a terrible team my first year. That's a hardship. I need a waiver. You're like, damn, that's we won that's two true. games. Can you imagine? Uh, I mean, I, I think he'll he'll be in the Olympics, and he'll, you know, if things work out with him and his girlfriend, he'll be, uh, you know, inviting Husker Nation to a wedding in North Platte. Oh, let's go! And Matt Rule can come, mm. and then he's going to go play professionally in Japan and make a million dollars a year. Do you think he'll come back like alumni weekend? Why wouldn't he? That, that's yeah. a long trip. Well, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah. I mean, how much he seems to enjoy the attention that yeah. he gets. I think he loves that. I think if he could make a weekend out of it, sure, I could see KC. Uh, maybe not like every year, but no. I, I'm sure he'll be there from time and I to think, time. I think a lot of it would depend on who, who else is coming back. But I, I, I would lean more towards yes, he would make it back because I think he really did appreciate the love that he got, and I think he would continue to. That's not going to hmm. going away anytime soon. I heard he's going to move to North Platte and be the head coach at Northwest Community <laughs> College. Ooh. That's what I heard. Now there's a gig, Coach K. Say, yeah. What if someday K. Coach K. Say, what if Coach K. K. Say, Tomanaga was living in North Platte. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen years from now, you see him at the hub. They're like just the random. You pull off, you're driving to Denver, you pull off yeah. of I 80 to get some gas, and you walk in, and one of those convenience stores, yeah. there's Casey. Casey. Casey's just filling up. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the, I can't remember what county, uh, what number the county is, but it's on, you see the car he's getting into. It's like, wow, those are Nebraska plates. He's got an 86 F 150 <laughs> steel toed boots. But you walk in shocked. With gun rack like, with oh, a shotgun. I heard on Pat McAfee that you were dead. <laughs> yeah. He's got four hay bales that, in the back of the truck. That what are you really doing? hasn't gotten as much run. No, no. That really was hasn't. a little bit uh, racist. Racist? Yeah. yeah. So Pat McAfee's show last week loved him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They killed him. Actually, like killed almost him. like physically killed him the other day. Yeah. With a ritual. R ritualistic suicide joke. Yep. Oh, that's tasteful. That mm -hmm. checks two boxes. Th there's, a, there's a reason. <laughs> like you've just pointed out why i don't know what you're talking about with pat mcafee exactly that reason is why i don't pay attention to anything that that man says so you don't know what you're missing no i i josh's do favorite show yeah josh big fan. well i have to follow it because connor's blocked so like <laughs> <laughs> you're still in, you're in survival mode yeah you, i just I, you keep a low profile uh -huh. yeah i get it i i, no, you're doing the I guess i blocked part. myself from the wow. pat mcafee show good so yeah. that's good on you Good, interesting good crossover today boys yeah, there's gonna be a lot of his his goodbye to nebraska will be long well no i mean it's i i bet they do something with him for the spring football game she's from the area yes north platte okay his girlfriend yeah that's why we made all the north yes. platte yeah. okay yes yeah he's gonna get a steak in pal's brewery <laughs> good brewery out there yeah. they, then, got, they it, got a name a beer after him right they, oh hell yeah they yeah. do mm. yeah the only other place I can think of, I think it's it, it's still there, the hub where you could uh, get um, popcorn out of a out of a uh, hubcap. I love a bar with popcorn. Yeah, I'm there. Well, I mean, it worked out for uh, famous Dave's. You could eat out of a trash can lid. <laughs> yeah, I, no, yeah, that's true. People <laughs> forget about that. That's true. Many would say it did not work out. <laughs> Many would yeah. say it did not work out. I don't that think well it led to the fire Dave's. over there uh, on Maple, but yeah, <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> It was a thing for a while. Uh, the one on L Street closed. I don't oh, know. I don't know of any that are open anymore. Right. Yeah, I think that one. I think that one closed first before the one in uh, in Maple caught on fire, and then they just decided, yeah, we're good. And nothing has moved in. No, since no, pretty pretty hopping area. Yeah, like, good visibility. There was one. Yeah. There was one like by the Bakers on North Seventy Second in yeah. Benson. Yeah, yeah. And then it was Off of like a fish restaurant. And then it was a famous Dave's again. And then it was something else again. That thing yeah, is, isn't it a seafood place now? Is that right? It's a crab restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it's really good. Haven't been locally? There. I, I'm going to guess not. Okay. Well, I guess there's one in Belgium. That's always a good question to ask when you go to a place like that. Like I go to uh, Shucks. Yeah. And I was like, got a question. The fish that is on the menu caught locally? <laughs> <laughs> Especially the, if it's near like a waiter, lake. the waitress is like, oh, I'm dealing with yeah, fish yeah, canoe. Locally like caught sea bass. Yeah, like this, exactly. is the guy, this is the guy I get today. I only eat fish that is caught locally. <laughs> Josh, did you say there's there's a Famous Dave's in Bellevue? Yes. Is Bellevue the place where like 
you you wonder hang on. do we still have one of those restaurants yeah. around here it's in bellevue it's in bellevue yeah i have one in bellevue i don't see, there, there's, like a, there's like a cluster off of uh corn husker yeah yeah so if i not only famous days but if i were to ask is there a skeeter barnes is there one in bellevue no We've killed Skeeter. Why? Why? It was I okay. think the closest one's in Carney. I think. Yeah. Is it still alive in Carney? I think it is. I think it's popular. Oh, I it's... feel like I've heard them on the Husker on the radio. Yeah. yeah, they used yeah. to. They're a sponsor. Uh, yeah. All I know is they had one in Columbus when I was there. Would you like mm. a little story on Skeeter Barnes on the Husker Sports Network? Yes. Would love Please. a story about that. I know. Um, I know. I know this one because you told it to me. So, barbecue. so they moved in uh, in Lincoln out on 56th and Highway Two. Uh, they were there for a while, but they became a big sponsor on the Husker Sports yeah. Network. Like they bought a huge budget. Like they, they they spent a lot of money to be on the Husker Sports mm-hmm. Network. The so instead barbecue. of giving people that were on the Husker Sports Network maybe like a gift card to go in there and sample, you were highly encouraged to go in there and eat at least once a month. Not on your own dime. On your own dime, by the way. Not on theirs. Okay. Not on theirs. Or the networks. Okay. Yeah, but you were supposed to go in and be visible and mm. pay for the food. And don't uh, tell anybody that we're doing this because we want the Skeeter Barnes people to feel comfortable enough that, man, we are so good that the the people on air, like the play-by-play voice of Husker football, comes in here. And has some of the best barbecue ever. Don't tell anybody that we're doing this. Yes, that was <laughs> You're not doing day. anything. That was said. <laughs> They have that some of the said, best microwaved is, barbecue is food. Just you can go get. in unassuming. Make sure you pay for it. Not hey, keep your receipt, and you know re- we'll get reimbursed. Right. But pay for it mm-hmm. and just go in and yeah. you know walk around, say hello to people. The explanation is you got to eat, right? Might as well go there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warren Swain ate at Skeeter Barnes once a week <laughs> <laughs> for like three years. Did they at least have like a punch card? I can one hundred percent believe that story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, but at least get a 10th meal free. He was Come told on. to do it and he and did. He did. It. Well, he's a good company, man. Gotta love that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, so they kept him in business at least for a little bit. Yeah. I, I if think any barbecue still there. restaurants want to advertise with 1620 to the zone, I would gladly come in there once a week and yeah. well, he, there are some good ones. There's, there's one out by me that is many really good. The oh. official no, I'm not gonna, of Husky hey, Nation. If they want their name on the radio, they got to pay for that. That's right. But yeah. there you go, John. You get it. Hey, I'm Sorry. also a good company man. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you are. All right, boys, have a uh, good show. All right, wide ranging crossover today. Good stuff. That always is like nothing is normal. We never got <laughs> to uh, Krispy Kreme being in McDonald's or yeah. how we have ruined the milkshake in this country. How long until McDonald's is selling? McGriddles, where the Krispy Kreme donut is the bun, yeah, okay. or just Aren't the, they uh, are basically doing that now, right away. Right? A Big yeah. Mac with a crisp, half a Krispy oh, Kreme in the middle. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. now you're talking. Yep. As long as the red I, lights I on. I look forward to you too, though. Talking about the milkshake is being ruined in this country. Uh, Simple is better with about. milkshakes. No, the Chicago White Sox put out the picture oh, of their baby. new 16 oh, ounce milkshake gimme, yesterday. Gimme right there. No, no. Don't you disparage we, the White Sox, we, Gary Sharp? It's the only reason to go to a White Sox game, John. It got. I agree with Gary on this point. We 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 are we are overcomplicating the milkshake. Yeah, well, that, that is very true. <laughs> chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Yeah, uh, I like a chocolate peanut butter. Okay, but but mm. it's very simple. Mm. We I don't need graham crackers. I don't need a ton of chocolate drizzle in there. Yeah, but you don't technically. Yeah, need if you have a, a good if you have a good milkshake, then you don't need any of that stuff. Kids nowadays they don't up. understand I, how, how simple the milkshake was. That made us so ha- happy and brought all the girls, you know, to the yard. <laughs> now I think got, it's boys. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's about the boy. yeah, it brings, brings all the yeah, boys. To brings the, the boys to the yard. Maybe yeah. some girls. I, we don't judge. Not that I'm yeah. against it, but I kind of wanted the girls to come to the yard. <laughs> um, but now we try and make the f- milkshake so fancy. Yeah, I just want it nice and simple. Yeah, we can we can delete up. the strawberry one as far as I'm yeah. Concerned. You're overcompensating. Oh, you're yeah. hiding something oh. if you try to like dress it up. A strawberry delete milkshake it. canceled. So, strawberry milkshake canceled. So many people do a strawberry milkshake, but so few of them do it well. When one is done well, it is very tasty. I don't know if I've ever had a good strawberry milkshake. I haven't. No, you're just saying that to say it. I I don't like strawberry milk. I don't like strawberry ice cream. I don't like strawberry milkshakes. No thanks. All right, it's low on my list. Chocolate or chocolate peanut butter? I'm good. 
they become like Bloody Marys. Where <laughs> that is true. Yeah, the it, more it, crap you can get yes. in, it's, it's an arms race yeah. to yes build that thing as high as possible. How can we? Yeah, how can we build that high without it tipping over? In high school, it was the Jamocha Shake from Arby's. Oh, those were good. I yeah. liked those ones. Yeah. yeah. There was something in those. Yeah, that's where I got off the beaten path of the vanilla or chocolate. Like, you got a Jamocha one. Okay. <laughs> where, where did uh, I'll, I'll entertain that. I think they still have Yeah, them. I think I think the Jamocha one still but does exist. they used exist. to promote them all the time. Yeah. 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 Either they're not concerned about pushing product uh, with the Jamocha shake, or it just does it itself. They don't need to. They don't need to spend dollars on it because it just it's its own I thing. Just don't, I just don't go to Arby's anymore. Yeah, it it so. appears as though it is still on the menu. Yeah. I uh, wonder if you just know. Vince said, will Josh do a poll question? Is a frosty a milkshake? Oh, oh, okay. Ooh, that, that's a great All question, right. actually. Yeah. I don't that's consider it question. to be a, a milkshake, but I don't either. I can see people Do they have saying, separate yeah. milkshakes at Wendy's. I don't think they have milkshakes. I think yeah. it's just the they frosty. Just have the frosty. But they, they, live, they live the frosty. frosty is their milkshake? Mm. It is. It is kind it, of yeah, drinkable. I mean, I mean, yeah. There's. You might have to wait like five minutes. Yes, but then, and then that thing's drinkable. Yeah. Let it lose a little bit of its uh, solid frozen mm. state, and then all of a sudden, you pretty much have a milkshake. Mm -hmm. Vince is very excited that he possibly has come up with a poll question. Oh, Vince, it's up, baby. <laughs> Way to go, Vince. <laughs> Just like that. All right. all right. Have a good show, boys. Thanks, boys. That does it for the crossover. Connor Happer Show with John Schreiner is next. That's the crossover. The Connor Happer Show is next on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Handley. I wanted Nebraska to settle in, make some shots early, and then get into a moderate pace yeah. because they're not built. Like, start with their Air Jordans and then, then slip on the uh, Skechers or the Hocus. Nebraska got sped up at the beginning of that game, and they got into, hey, let's just trade threes. And they did it to themselves early, and it became durable. Mornings with Sharp and Handley. Weekdays 6 to 10 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cold start Wednesday with increasing clouds through the morning. Can't rule out a few stray flurries. Otherwise, expect more afternoon sunshine. Staying cool, though, with highs in the low to mid 40s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. Looking for a sweet treat that will transport you back into time? Look no further than Ted and Wally's. With two convenient locations in Benson and the Old Market, it's the perfect place to satisfy your cravings. Whether you're downtown or in Benson, make sure to stop in. And if you're catching a basketball game, why not indulge in a delicious dessert afterwards? With over 3,000 flavors to choose from, there's something for everyone. Don't forget to check out our social media for daily flavors. Ted and Wally's, serving up nostalgia at its finest for over 35 years. Visit tedandwallys.com for more information. At Sid Dillon Chevrolet, we want you to have the best car buying experience possible. Shop Nebraska's number one volume Chevy dealer group or at SidDillonChevy.com. Together, let's drive. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa. It's sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7600. Three, three. Meet Cheryl. Hey, she's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. It's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and But five. she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks.
Velocity Clinical Research in Omaha frequently conducts clinical trials for a broad range of investigational treatments. Typical studies involve medications for high cholesterol, diabetes, infectious diseases, acne, and others. Some current studies include low T, COPD, flu, pediatric, infant, and RSV. They also perform vaccine studies for people of all ages, conducting innovative research that has a positive impact on lives. See current trials at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. Compensation for study-related time and travel. Find out more at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. You know what mentality can help you with? Low energy, motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, moody, irritability, impatience, anxiety, and depression. Mentality can help you with their board-certified physicians and their testosterone treatments that can take care of you and get you back in the game. You can regain normal function and restore your ability to perform normally at all levels just by mentality. Set up an appointment today. Go to LowTUSA.com. Get back in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and let mentality lead the way. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend. Grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The Source. By your mom's house. It's the Connor Happer Show. Are we sure we want to do this? Uh, could you, like, make an announcement that we're ready? It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620. The Zone. Wednesday at 1620 The Zone, Connor Happer on his way to Vegas. That means you get three and a half hours of me. John Schreiner sitting in today. Josh Odson is the producer of The Connor Happer Show. Good morning, Josh. How we doing? Things are good. Um, Happy to be here. Love sitting in. I got uh, a good show planned for today. Uh, we got Robin Washett at 11 a.m. We'll talk to him about recapping the Nebraska basketball season, maybe get some athletic director questions, get his thoughts on Troy Dannon. Uh, we're going to talk NCAA tournament. Who's going to win? What are the storylines? What's coming up? A little preview of Creighton and Tennessee. Uh, then at 11.45, Josh Hudson has some odd news. I do, I do. He does that. Uh, it's also a tweet bag Wednesday, so... We welcome all your questions. No matter how you send it in, it's a tweet. You can tweet at the show, at me, at John Schreiner. You can tweet at Josh Odson, at producer Josh. You can send an email to Josh. It's Josh O. Correct. Josh O at 1620thezone.com. If, if you do Josh at 1620thezone, it's going to go to Josh Peterson, and he's going to ignore it because he's in Las Vegas. Uh, you can also text the show, 402-951-1620. Get your questions in for the tweet bag. Josh and I will answer those at high noon. Why is it high noon? Is it just because the hands point up on the clock? Is that why it's high noon? You think? I think that's because that's the highest point of the sun, right? It could be. I've never known. Well, uh, then we have a top five. And to close out the show, we're going to do a little thing I like to do when I come in because I know you like to talk about movies. I like to talk about movies. Your regular host doesn't really know much about movies i can't talk to him at all about these things so we're gonna do movie talk coming up at 115 um you saw roadhouse i saw the creator uh we're gonna talk about some movies that are coming up that we might be excited to see so those are all the things we're gonna get to today but we're gonna start the show with some talk about these rule changes in the nfl have you heard these rule changes josh i have i have yeah, everybody's heard the we're, rule changes. We're a soft generation is yeah. what I've heard. And that that's right where I want to go is the all of the foot stomping and hand wringing and tantrums about these rule changes, about how the game is going soft and the players are weak. My my contention here is that the players don't vote on the rules. This is not oh, okay the players who are voting on these rules. This is the owners voting on the rules, right? 
And when you're when you're looking at this, I think the correct lens to look at all of this through is the one that shows you the dollar signs. These rules are definitely about money. The hip ta the hip drop tackle rule is money. They will give it to you under the auspices of player safety, right? We want to reduce injuries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But do you think honestly that they want to reduce injuries because they want their players to be healthier? Yes, of course they do. But why? Because they want them on the field because they're paying them a lot of money. And if they're injured sitting on the sidelines, they're not getting anything out of the asset. So anything that they can do to reduce the time that a player is off the field, that's beneficial to an NFL owner. Maybe, maybe that's a cynical way of looking at it, but I think it's the correct way of looking at it. Because the NFL is just a money printing machine and they can't get enough of it. All the decisions that the owners make are about protecting their bottom line. And the bottom line is players have to be on the field if they're getting paid lots of money. That's why these rule changes are made. The kickoff rule is a little different. This one's not about player safety. That was what they said the last time they changed the kickoff rule. They didn't want players colliding, so they were going to have fewer returnable kickoffs. So they made it so you could call a fair catch and the, the ball was moved out to the 25 to reward the fair catch and the touchback. That was all in the interest of protecting players. So now we're saying, strike that. We want more kickoff returns. We want some action. We don't want people changing the channel for 10 minutes exactly. because they know it's going to go commercial, kickoff commercial. And they don't have to watch the kickoff because nothing ever happens. It's a touchback out of the back of the end zone. And the team's going to start on the 25. What, 85% of the time? Mm -hmm. That was the time when you flip over and check the other game on the other network. So this is also about money. This is about keeping eyeballs on the television that's, set. That's true. So we've, we've thrown the, we don't want kickoffs because we want to keep players safer out the window. And now we have a new kickoff rule. And if the new kickoff rule is a little bit weird and it's a little hard to understand, but it basically boils down to this. There's no more touchbacks that are like rewarding for the team that kicks the touchback. If you kick a touchback, they're going to get it at the 35 now. And there's the, the landing zone between the five yard line and the 20 yard line where the ball has to land. And then it's returned, and we basically have a line of scrimmage where the players are five yards apart, and it's going to put a different emphasis on what kind of players you keep on your roster for special teams purposes. Right. It It's worked pretty well in the XFL. It seemed to have been a pretty exciting play, and imagine what the NFL could do with, uh, theoretically, faster players in, in those return positions. So here's here's what I think. I think it's actually the pure speed guys that everyone kept on their roster as the return man, they might not be as relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. You need, because it is essentially like a long running play. You need a guy who can see the open field, get to space, read the blocks okay. and find the crease. So it's more like, these are almost more running back skills than wide receiver skills where you can run really fast in a straight line. Like a small, fast running back? Yeah. Like a, I know he doesn't play anymore, but like a Darren Sproles. Like a Darren Sproles, like an Amir Abdullah. Uh-huh. Still those, in the league? Those guys are going to be able to hang around on rosters because they're going to have value as kickoff returners. And essentially what the NFL is trying to do is make it so that every kickoff is returned now. You are de-incentivized from kicking it out of the back mm -hmm. of the end zone. Harshly so. You're too good at kicking the ball. Please, please be more accurate. <laughs> so, and now with, so the other thing that it brings up with, with teams in their roster construction, the, the major emphasis for kickers was on the power leg. You've got to have a guy who can bang it out of the back of the end zone and can kick it from 60 yards out. Well, now you need a kicker who can drop it in there. Oh, yeah. Are you going to you gonna have to have two kickers? 
who a guy, not just the power leg guy, you got to have someone who can put that thing in that five to 20 yard window mm -hmm. consistently and regularly drop it right in there because if he can't, your defense is going to be on the back foot from the jump. So that that's another interesting part of this. The other thing that really struck me when I first read the, the kickoff rule was it eliminates the surprise onside kick. That's no longer a thing. You think sorry, of, Scott Frost. You think yeah, sorry, Scott Frost. Um, you think back to the the Super Bowl with the Saints when Sean Payton came out in the second half, mm -hmm. kicked the surprise onside kick, they get it back, they go down and score. You can't do that anymore. If you're going to do an onside kick, you must declare that you're doing an onside kick so that you can change the alignment on the field. And then you're not even allowed to declare to do an onside kick until the fourth quarter. So there's Oh, okay. I did not know that aspect of it. Right. So the rule eliminates the surprise onside kick, which was a cool and fun play mm -hmm. sometimes, unless you're doing it in Ireland against Northwestern. But on the on the flip side, it's not all negative. I think this rule is going to increase kick return touchdowns, which are also cool and fun. So net zero as far as the change on the fun factor, I think. Actually, it's probably a positive. Yeah. I think it's probably because you're going to have more kick return touchdowns than you would have surprise onside kicks. So I think it's it's probably a net positive as I'm talking through it. And right away, there are teams that are already seeing the writing on the wall and making this a priority. The Pittsburgh Steelers, mere hours after the rule change came down, signed Cordero Patterson, who has those kind of skills that we were just talking about. He played... He's a wide receiver who also plays running back sometimes. Mm -hmm. He played running back for the Falcons when they were, you know, when they had injury trouble. And was pretty successful doing it. He's been a really good return man as well. So teams are already seeing that this is going to be important. They need to, to get on board. And look, it, it's going to look a lot different. You're not going to recognize it the first time. And if you're like a casual NFL fan, the first time you flip on a game... What is this? What are we doing with this kickoff? All in all, I, <laughs> I, 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 do, I do think the new kickoff rule, after some time to digest it, I think it's going to make, make for a more fun watch. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to like verbally explain the rule to somebody, but like watching it executed, it, it makes a lot of sense for both things that they're trying to do. It almost looks like a rugby kickoff to me. Ooh. Where they, because in, in rugby, they kick the ball way up high in the air downfield. Now they are allowed to, to run downfield before the ball touches the returner or the ground. And then one of the forwards will lift one of the backs up in the air to catch it, which would be really cool if we could do that in the NFL. That would be, that would be big fun. Um, but you're penalized for kicking it into the try zone in rugby. So. It, they've sort of taken a page out of the rugby book to make this new kickoff rule, in my view. But, again, this isn't about... They'll tell you it's about player safety and they're doing these things. This one isn't about player safety. This one's about keeping more eyes on the special teams' plays when everyone changes the channel. It's the reason they moved the extra point back. Because after the touchdown, what do you do? Well, extra point's going to be good. Let's check the other game, mm -hmm. see what's happening. Maybe I'm going to look at my phone for a bit. I'm going to go on to Twitter and see what's happening on Twitter. No, they're going to, they want your eyes on the screen. And so they're trying to make every play consequential. And look, I think this is a good way to do it. If you're trying to, to make more plays in the game matter, and especially on the special teams, it's a good way to do it. But there's another layer to this whole story. And it's at the level below the NFL. Kirby Smart is on the rules committee for college football. And he had some thoughts. No wonder George is so good. I know the rule book. We'll talk about that after the break. It's Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. You could say goodbye to your busted brackets because my friends from FanDuel... They let you bet on every 
game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. New customers right now get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. So listen to my friend AB, who just came on the show, and he said, eh, maybe like the under, so maybe like the Jays and the points, plus two and a half for the late game on Friday night. There's that. So many options for you. Just make sure your first $5 bet wins, and then you're locked in for $200 in bonus bets. All you have to do, sign up right now, fanduel.com slash happer, and you, along with me, can bet on college hoops all the way until they cut down the nets. 21 and over, present in Iowa. First online real money wager, only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now a throttle bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. For the Jays, the Huskers, and even you Jayskers, we are 1620 The, the Zone. zone. What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubby's downtown in the old market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Family is important to me. So is shopping local and getting the best for my money. And at Jensen Tire and Auto, I get it all. They're a family-owned company that started right here in 1973. My family's been going to Jensen for years for tires, routine service and maintenance, even engine repairs. That's because we know at Jensen, they do tires and auto service right. And Jensen's team of tire and auto service professionals really take pride in what they do. Maybe that's because it's a locally owned and family owned business. It's hard to say, but I like it. Hi, I'm Matt Jensen, president of Jensen Tire and Auto, inviting you to experience the difference at our locally owned and family owned company. Check us out at JensenTireAndAuto.com today. Get ready for warm weather driving with early spring tire deals at Jensen. Save up to $200 on Goodyear, Cooper, General, Continental, Maxxis, and Kelly tires. Check out Jensen's early spring tire deals at JensenTireAndAuto.com today. Meet Cheryl. Hey, she's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. It's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and But she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Maverick Baseball and Softball are underway. And single game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick Baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha Softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd. And Maverick Baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the Rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives. But those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com sports. Ramp.com sports. 
RAMP.com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Connor Happer Show. John Trainer sitting in today. Josh Odson pushing the buttons. Literally and figuratively. Yep. Been talking about the new kickoff rules in the NFL. And that may not be the only kickoff rule change that we see in the football landscape. Kirby Smart was asked about the kickoff rule. He is a member of the College Football Rules Committee. And he was interviewed... I believe by the athletic and he had some thoughts. He said on the new rule, I think the NFL is the model. They know what they want. They know what they're trying to do and they're going to get it right. And then hopefully we can look into it ourselves. If the kickoff is not part of our game. So essentially the kickoff is not part of the college game anymore. Just as it it was in the NFL, the touchback percentage is very high. Last season, nearly 50% of kickoffs were touchbacks Whoa. in college football. 49.6%. That is up from just over 41% in 2020. And During that time was when they made it legal to call for a fair catch on a kickoff. You can, you can call for a fair catch in it that you don't get it where you call for the fair catch. It comes out to the 25, right? So if you're anywhere inside the 25, call for a fair catch, get it at 25. Many teams just quite simply almost refused to return kickoffs. Nebraska being one of them. This was a major gripe with Nebraska fans is our return game is non-existent. We don't return punts. We don't return kickoffs. It's a fair catch every time. Or it's a touchback ball kicked out of the back of the end zone. The number of times in the last five years that Nebraska had a good kick return, like it's, it's a very small number. And look, College football is as much about the eyeballs and the dollar signs as the NFL is these days. The The TV contracts are huge, and those networks want return on their investment. They need the eyeballs on the product to get the ad revenue to pay for those huge rights deals. So don't think for a second that if this works in the NFL, if it makes kickoffs more exciting, if there are more touchdowns if it puts more points on the board hell if it just gets teams in better scoring position and say scoring average goes up by a point and a half in the nfl and you can point directly to better starting field position for teams when they return a kick college football is going to adopt Mm -hmm. it yep as because as much as we like the sickos committee and we like the six to nine football game with, you know, no touchdowns and three safeties and three field goals. Like (laughs) what really gets people interested is, is points touchdowns specifically scoring totals are, if scoring totals go up, more people are interested. So if college football can, can point to this and say, look, it's working in the NFL. We're going to, they're going to adopt it. And I am my projection is this is going to be something that the NFL likes. I think it's going to be a benefit to the NFL and in the next say 3 years this rules coming to college football. They're going to do the same thing. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. It also is going to give college football programs a chance to showcase Return men. 
Hello, Jed Award. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And they're going to get players who maybe wouldn't have got an opportunity, a chance to play in the league as a return specialist because they have the kind of skills it takes to be effective at the new kickoff return. There are only benefits for the college game if they adopt this rule. So I see, I think it's coming. I think you're going to see it. I mean, you might even see it as low down as the, as the high school level, although touchbacks aren't quite as common at the high school level. But here in Nebraska, the rule is if the ball touches the end zone in any way, it's a touchback. You can also call for a fair catch. Right? You may see it filter down all the way to the high school level at some point. It's a big change. It's not going to look the same. And we can be curmudgeonly about our game and how it's we don't need all these changes, but look, progress is coming. And it, it might actually make it more fun to watch. Yeah, just allow yourself to envision a world where the kickoff is watchable. <laughs> it seems like a pretty no brainer. Like, yeah, let's 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 do that. Let's check that box. But anytime you got change, there's always people that are gonna drag their feet. Foot draggers. All right, we got to get to a break. We got Robin Washett of Husker Online coming up. Talk to him about Nebraska ball and some uh maybe some chatter about Troy Dan and what's going on in the AD chair at Nebraska. That's coming up here on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubby's downtown in the Old Market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. A DJ spinning songs, cheeseburgers, raffles, and more. Just a random Saturday? Nope. It's the Spring Open House at Lust Hills Harley-Davidson. Come in, join the fun, and swing your leg over a genuine Harley-Davidson. I-29 at the Glenwood Exit and at LustHillsHD.com. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? A man age 50, non-tobacco user, can obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $110 per month. Level rate for 20 years. That's right, guaranteed level rate for 20 years. If you're a smoker, there are great rates available for you as well. Call Term Busters for a quote. 1-800-908-7636. You're probably paying more than you should. Call 1-800-908-7636. Remember, call Term Busters. 1-800-908-7636. Sample rate for preferred non-tobacco rate class. Exam required to qualify. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Host Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Get signed up for this year's Leahy Clawson Maverick Run, Saturday, April 20th at Baxter Arena. This race has something for every type of runner. With a one-mile kids race, a 5K walker run, or a 10K run. New this year, the 5K and 10K courses are certified. And there's a kid zone inside Baxter Arena. The event starts at 8 a.m. Saturday, April 20th. Go to omavs.com slash maverick run for more information and get signed up. Proceeds go to Omaha Women's Athletics. It's the Maverick Run at Baxter Arena, April 20th. See you there. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. 
The Storm Chasers open the 2024 season this weekend against the Iowa Cubs. Catch the action all weekend long on your home for Storm Chasers baseball. 1290 Coil. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. The biggest basketball coaching convention of... You work on your stroke. Oh, you what? You don't want to be embarrassed? Oh, yeah, I'm talking. What is going on? Robin, are you okay? Robin Washington. Are your kids near you, or what just happened? Husker Online. It took a lot of preparation to make this thing a, a flawless interview, and clearly I still can't avoid it. Robin Washington, Husker Online. Maybe it was aliens. Maybe it was a phenomenon that we can't explain. The Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Connor Happer Show, 1620 The Zone. Wednesday before the Sweet 16. And we are joined now by Robin Washett. Robin Washett of Husker Online. Robin, how are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? Uh, you know, sitting in a radio chair for the day. Just filling in. <laughs> Could Nothing be major. Worse. Could be could be worse, could be better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I wanted to, to get you some Nebraska ball questions as the season has now come to an end. Um, just overall, what's what's your takeaway from the way the season ended? Um, I mean, there's no denying the ending couldn't have been more disappointing than it was, uh, just considering the scene that uh, it was down there in Memphis and you know, the way that that game started and just the the way that uh, it felt briefly that the, the stars finally had all aligned to, to finally get that monkey off the back and then not just to lose, but to lose in that fashion, kind of got run out of the gym. Um, it was about as big of a letdown um, considering the amount of buildup that had led up to that game um, that they could possibly imagine. But I think as the uh, dust settled and, uh, you kind of look back at the season with a little less of the immediate emotion. Um, you know, I thought it was a pretty significant step in the right direction to where they followed up, um, you know, a, a good step the year before where, you know, they got 500 competed for postseason play. And most importantly, kind of got the culture back on track. They built upon that in a, in a pretty major way this year to where, um, you know, they actually had, good roster retention, maintain that culture, and then supplemented it um, both with talent and character with uh, what they added in the portal. And that led to one of the most successful, uh, at least regular seasons, in program history. So um, I think there was far more good than bad. And, you know, really has kind of put Nebraska in a situation where going into this offseason, they're once again um, in a position to take yet another step you know, and the, the biggest key is uh, you know retaining the the key roster pieces um to, to you know again maintain that foundation and then the next most important step is to continue to add talent to um you know take just the overall quality of the team to that next level to where games like uh, texas a&m don't happen again um but you know i would say that just the, the position nebraska's in right now is as good as it's been in a long long time probably in the last 20 years um and maybe more so um as as you know the as much as that lost stung and you know, the as awful of an ending as it was i think the overall totality of the season uh like i said is is almost a, a total positive when it comes to continuing the right trajectory for the program yeah it was interesting watching that game because to me it felt like watching so many of the Nebraska football games over the last handful of years where at the start you're hopeful and it maybe it starts really well and you, and you start getting your your hopes up a little bit more but then at some point and in the in the game I think it was like after 6 or 7 minutes you just start to get this feeling like oh this is not going to go the right way this is going in a in a bad bad direction and it started to feel like just this slow death march to the final whistle uh, I, just, I just wonder what you thought the difference between the two teams were, Texas A&M and Nebraska. Well, I mean, like looking back on it, I think me and a lot of other people around here probably should have given A&M a lot more credit uh, for, for what they had become at the end of the year, as opposed to just kind of judging them on the totality of the entire season. Uh, you know, because the, the team that they were 
uh, you know, from November to January was a whole lot different than the one uh, that had really kicked it to another gear from from March on. So, um, and, and the big reason why is because they'd always been a really good rebounding team, physical, you know, like they, that wasn't a surprise. The surprise was how good they were offensively and how well they shot it from the perimeter. And you know, if you go back and look at the previous six, five or six games, you know, leading into that one, um, they had flipped a switch. They changed up their starting lineup and, you know, really had uh, um, kind of changed their, their personnel and their rotations a little bit to where that shooting improved drastically uh, over the previous few games. And I think, you know, I certainly was guilty of just kind of looking at, oh, maybe this is just a flash in the pan thing. They are what they are. They're a team that lost 14 games this year. You know, we're just a few weeks ago, you know, on, on the bubble as one of the first four out. So like, you know, I think, kind of overlooked them a little bit but when they (laughs) when they shoot like that you know make 13 threes uh and then add in that with the the physicality and clear advantage they have on the boards that's about as bad of a matchup for nebraska as you could possibly imagine because not only do they exploit nebraska's biggest weakness which is rebounding um, especially defensive rebounding um you know they're also able to counter nebraska's biggest strength which is three-point shooting so um, it was really kind of a, just a worst case scenario uh, for Nebraska with the way A and M shot the ball, and I'll also give them credit with the way that they handled those first four to five minutes. Not a lot of teams, I don't think, could do that. Um, and it was it felt so much like the Indiana game um, in the the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament, where Nebraska absolutely just, just hit the ground at a full sprint and just blitz the Hoosiers and they crumbled. They did not respond well at all. Nebraska took the game over from the very beginning. Well, Nebraska was doing the same things offensively. You know, Case is hitting his first three threes. The crowd's in absolute frenzy. And what does A and M do? You know, Wade Taylor just jogs down the court and pops a, a 25 foot three pointer from the top of the key and silences the crowd. And they just did that over and over again to where Nebraska eventually cooled off a little bit. And, you know, after all that hot start, they were up by four points. And then a and just the physicality started to wear Nebraska down. Nebraska couldn't defend them, and they weren't getting rebounds. And it ended up just being a, a complete avalanche on them. So that's that's probably the the, the big thing is that um, the team Nebraska saw in that game uh, was a whole lot different than I think people assumed A&M was going to be based off of what they were earlier in the year. Uh, for me, it was I, I, the the three point shooting was certainly a, a big factor. I felt like A and M just looked way more athletic, just faster with the ball in their hands than Nebraska. Which I don't, there weren't teams that really made Nebraska look slow this year, as far as I could tell. A and M made Nebraska look like their feet were stuck in the mud for for most of that game to me. Yeah, it was a lot like a, uh, Illinois, where like Nebraska couldn't guard Terrence Shannon, and it's the same thing where Nebraska on the perimeter just couldn't guard A and M's guards. Like they would, they weren't quick enough they weren't strong enough to, to stay in front of them and they weren't athletic enough to challenge them at the rim um i, I would probably say that Jawan gary was like the closest athlete nebraska had to what a&m had and a&m had like five or six Jawan yeah. garys and so yeah. that's that's the difference you know is, is that you know, nebraska has been able to counter that lack of athleticism with with its shooting and then with its team defense well that defense just wasn't there you know the, the things that have made them so good in the regular season a and M was just completely able to negate that because they never took the ball to the baseline where they do that baseline trap and uh, force bad passes and create turnovers. A and M was just beating guys off the dribble. They couldn't stay in front of them. And once they got to the rim, they were either making layups or they'd miss, and then they get the offensive rebound and score off of that. So it was just a um, kind of an impossible situation for Nebraska where they didn't have the bodies or the athletes to, to stop the dribble penetration, and then A and M was just knocking down three pointers at will. And when they were missing, they were getting second chance opportunities. So, like, the, there was zero answers for Nebraska, and a lot of that, I agree, had to do with just the clear advantage A and M had from an athleticism standpoint. Um, the the sadness set in pretty early in, in that one for sure. Um, the uh, Kase Tomonaga tweeted out a thank you. Looks like the Kase era is officially over at Nebraska. I know there was some question about whether he might be able to get a waiver for an extra year if he wanted it. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. So. Uh, with that coming to an end, where do you think Nebraska goes from here? What's the next era of Nebraska basketball? Yeah, I don't know where that K-State thing came from. I saw the Reddit post. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like 
so out of left field. I, I didn't even know how to react to it. So no, uh, he's not getting a waiver. He's, he's moving on. Um, close the book on that one. Um, but what they do now, um, I mean, the, the obvious needs are you got to replace Casey. They need a elite level shooter score, um, two guard that can come in and potentially be a day one starter. Um, and I think there's the, the momentum they have from what they accomplished this season open some doors for them and the fan support that they've been able to generate, that's going to open some doors through NIL to where Nebraska is going to be competitive. Um, so we'll see kind of who emerges as legitimate candidates on that front. Um, if there's been some names with contact, but that's, that's kind of all it is right now. It's just preliminary contact and interest. Um, I would imagine by the end of this week, you'll probably get a better idea of who realistic, legitimate, portal targets are uh, and a lot of that's just because Nebraska needs to figure out what its roster is going to look like um, they had their meetings beginning uh, at the start of this week uh, with Fred Hoiberg one-on-one with each player in three departures really only Eli Rice was much of a surprise um, but they got to figure out who all is officially coming back and uh, who, who's going and then that'll kind of determine their priority list with uh, you know what they go going forward but scoring guard uh, rebounding, shot blocking, or at least rim protecting, uh, big to replace Josiah Alec. And then, um, with Blaze Kata gone, probably maybe add a little bit more front court depth. And then, uh, whoever leaves after that, I'd say, um, just kind of depends on, um, how the rest of the priorities shake out. I, I know this has been a, a point of debate for a lot of the fans. Do they need a true point guard? Well, I mean, you think about it, they have one on the roster with Aaron Euless. Uh, he'll, he'll be eligible next year. Um, Bryce Williams played really well at point guard uh, or towards the back end of the year. So you bring him back, that's a pretty good one-two punch. You bring Jamarcus Lawrence back. They spent the last year trying to groom him into point guard play, and it was erratic, but you know, you would have hoped that with another offseason of, of work in that role, um, he'd continue to develop. So that's there's three guys right there that you know you have your – starting point guard at the beginning of the year, your starting point guard at the end of the year, and a guy that started 27 games as on the NCAA tournament team at Iowa, that's that's a pretty good combo right there in that lead guard role. So I don't I don't think that's much of a priority compared to other needs. They need scores is what they need. You lose Casey, there's not one player on the roster that can replicate what Casey Tomanaga did. So they need to go out and get a true bona fide shot clock winding down, put the ball in his hands, and then go get a bucket type score. Um, and then, like, you know, their front court losing um, Josiah and, and Blaze, you know, they, they need some more depth there. And they need guys that are, are proven at this level that we just talked about physicality and athleticism. They just they need to get some dudes. They need to get some yeah. guys that can compete with, you know, those linebackers A&M was trotting out there uh, so they don't get overwhelmed just from a physical standpoint if they, if they get back to this stage next year. So, um, I'd say just improving your your size, strength, and athleticism in the front court, um, and getting a bona fide go to scorer uh, at that two guard spot are clear number one, two priorities depending on how you want to rank them. Um, and point guard, I, for me, it's a little bit down the line just considering the potential depth they have coming back. But bringing back Bryce is a significant component in that. Jamarcus Lawrence is a component in that. And once those two guys are settled. I think they feel pretty good about that room. Well, as the portal spins, we'll see what what happens and and who's coming to Lincoln for next season. Wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the the new athletic director Troy Dannon uh, had his presser. Were you able to glean anything from from his opening remarks as the man in the chair for Nebraska? I mean, a lot of it is not that different from the things we've heard from the last several introductory athletic director press conferences. But I thought what really stood out was his emphasis on NIL and player yeah. compensation and being at the forefront of that and singling out 1890 by name and saying he was going to wear their gear just as much as Nebraska gear. Like that was not happening under Trev Alberts. In fact, it seemed like Trev had a lot of resistance towards embracing 1890 as the collective uh, of Nebraska. So um, I think that is probably the the most notable change for me is that you know you have basically 
everybody that's in charge right now is 100% in line with um, one collective. And I think that's important to get that thing uh, to the level where it needs to be to actually compete in that area at a championship level. So that, that stood out to me. And then just kind of the way that he, um, you know, constantly referenced staying at the forefront of the changing landscape, not just NIL, but like, you know, the, the, the different things that they need to do to, to be pioneers, um, in, in just college sports, not just football, but, but everything. And you go back and listen to Matt rules, uh, press conference from a week or two ago, uh, it, it almost echoed everything Matt rule was saying. So I'm sure that's not a coincidence whatsoever. Uh, and I think that relationship probably played a big part in why Troy Dannon is here. And, uh, you know, it seems like everybody's on the same page from that standpoint that, you know, Nebraska can't be afraid to take risks. They got to be, um, aggressive when it comes to adapting and changing how they do things to keep up with, uh, the, the rapidly evolving world of college sports. And so, you know, it was good to hear that. And then he also kind of took away that that stadium expansion project might be put on the yeah. back burner for a while. Um, yeah. the fact that he'd been there for almost a week and said that he didn't really know much about it tells you just what kind of a priority getting that thing off the ground is going. So I would anticipate they, uh, either delay that or significantly scale back those plans to make it much more manageable financially and also be a lot less disruptive uh, for the actual football seasons to come over the next couple of years. Uh, last one, then we'll let you get out of here. Um, to me, and I don't know, maybe I'm maybe I'm off base, but it feels like Nebraska's kind of been playing musical chairs with the athletic director. So of the last five, only Tom Osborne stayed for longer than four years, right? We had... In the past, you had uh, 10 years of Bill Byrne. You had 25 years of Bob Devaney. Troy Dannon only spent five months at his last job. Is this is this troublesome, or is this the, the nature of the business now? Yeah, I mean, I just think it's the reality of universities and uh, both the academic and athletic side where, you know, these you know, decades of the, the same leadership, it's, getting harder and harder to come by now it's not like it's impossible i mean you see there's plenty of other examples of that type of stability but nebraska hasn't sniffed anything close to that in a long time and i think that is as big of a reason for why the state of nebraska at least men's athletics is what it is is because uh, of that you know revolving door that has been its most important leadership position so we'll see um you know obviously when you take a job and Five months later, you're off to another one. That doesn't bode well for you know him being uh, you know, a lifelong fixture uh, of that position. But uh, he was he was asked that, and you know he said that he wouldn't have left Washington after five months for for many other jobs, if any other job than Nebraska. So maybe that's just uh, you know saying what people wanted to hear, or maybe it's how he truly felt. I guess you just don't know. Um, things change quickly, uh, but. You know, I, I do think that, you know, just based off what he said and what people have said about him, that the his short turnaround at Washington wasn't indict- indicative of how he's going to approach this position at Nebraska. He seems like this is a place where he wanted to be, and the people that are closest to him told him that this is a job you can't turn down. And so you would think, in theory, um, he plans on being here for the long haul, but there are no certainties in today's mm. world and especially in college athletics. Yeah. Trev was supposed to be here for the long haul too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Robin wash it. Husker online. Enjoyed the chat today, man. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah. Good talking to you. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. Give you a little rundown of the sweet 16. It gets going tomorrow night at six o'clock. Josh and I'll give you who we think is going to win. Break down the Creighton, Tennessee matchup. And I'll tell you what my favorite game of the Sweet 16 is Ooh. going to be. That's all coming up next on the Connor Happer Show, 1620 Zone. Previously on The Crossover. I have mostly sports things that I want nothing to do with muted. Okay. Major League Baseball, muted. <laughs> Baseball, <laughs> muted. I thought you loved the Mets. Uh, I did. Yeah. Mahomes, Chiefs, Harbaugh, Wolverines, Michigan, FIFA World Cup. Goal. Qatar. Goal. World Cup. VAR, USMTAC, World Cup, Wordle. I got lots on here. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer Show, unsportsmanlike conduct, 6A to 6P, 1620, the zone. 
your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cold start Wednesday with increasing clouds through the morning. Can't rule out a few stray flurries. Otherwise, expect more afternoon sunshine. Staying cool, though, with highs in the low to mid 40s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. The Connor Happer Show returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Looking for a sweet treat that will transport you back into time? Look no further than Ted and Wally's. With two convenient locations in Benson and the Old Market, it's the perfect place to satisfy your cravings. Whether you're downtown or in Benson, make sure to stop in. And if you're catching a basketball game, why not indulge in a delicious dessert afterwards? With over 3,000 flavors to choose from, there's something for everyone. Don't forget to check out our social media for daily flavors. Ted and Wally's, serving up nostalgia at its finest for over 35 years. Visit tedandwallys.com for more information. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're gonna do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialist. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. NebraskaCancer.com Hi, I'm Kamiko, the founder of Miko's Hot Chicken. When we started our family restaurant, we were also raising a family. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Our Chase Inc. car was there to reward us on all of our business needs. Now we have a thriving location, and we're hungry for more. With the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card, you can earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, so your business can go from here to possible. Chase for business. Make more with yours. Real business owners compensated for their participation. Cards issued by J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member of FDIC. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa. It's sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircusSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Maverick baseball and softball are underway, and single-game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd, and Maverick baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Velocity Clinical Research in Omaha frequently conducts clinical trials for a broad range of investigational treatments. Typical studies involve medications for high cholesterol, diabetes, infectious diseases, acne, and others. Some current studies include low T, COPD, flu, pediatric, infant, and RSV. They also perform vaccine studies for people of all ages, conducting innovative research that has a positive impact on lives. See current trials at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. Compensation for study-related time and travel. Find out more at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. At Sid Dillon Chevrolet, we want you to have the best car buying experience possible. Shop Nebraska's number one volume Chevy dealer group or at SidDillonChevy.com. Together, let's drive. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon.
Halfway through the second hour here on a Wednesday. Just handed some breaking news by Josh Odson. That's right. Never know what's going to happen on the Connor Happer show. Nothing but illustrious guests, especially when Connor Happer isn't <laughs> here to talk to them. Uh, I've been informed by the Chicago White Sox that in 30 minutes, yes, so much advance notice from the Chicago White Sox, a terrifically run organization, that Nikki Lopez will be joining us. Oh, Connor's going to be so At mad. Noon. I know, I know. We talked to him last year. He loved it. He was on cloud nine for weeks. <laughs> And then he became a brave, and I was on cloud nine for weeks because we had talked to him. And guess guess who's a White Sox fan? Is it you? I'm a White Sox guy. What are the odds? I know, right? This is so Nicky weird. Lopez. So uh, he'll he'll join us in half an hour's time. But Josh, Wednesdays at noon, we do the tweet bag. What are we going to do? We're going to push it for Nicky Lopez is that's, what we're going to do. That's right. Creighton guy, big leaguer, wants to join the show. He gets to join the show. So we'll do the tweet bag at one. We'll do the tweet bag at one. It might cut into our movie talk a little bit, but for Nikki Lopez, we can we can cuddle down someone on the movie talk. I will make I will make these accommodations for Nikki. Yeah. So that be sure to tune in at noon. Nikki Lopez, former Creighton Blue Jay, mm -hmm. current Chicago White Sox. Is it White Sox or White Sox player? And what's good, what's the what's question. the singular of White Sox? I've always said White Sox, but yeah. I mean I I, I kind of tip the cap to you on yeah what the proper pronunciation is it, it, it's interesting because is it white socks is does that is that a like a, a catch-all can you say he's he's a white socks doesn't sound right it, does, it hits the ear wrong maybe let's ask the audience is okay it, is the singular of white socks white sock or white socks okay we'll put that up at happer show right. on twitter all right, we promised you that we were going to talk NCAA tournament, and that is what we will do right now. Uh, to start off, Josh, how's your bracket? Um, not uh, not great. I picked some upsets mm -hmm. that didn't come to fruition, but I'm I'm looking good for like Final Four, Elite Eight. Like I I, yeah. I haven't had any major losses. I did have Kentucky going pretty Ooh, far, but so did I. I, it's kind of on me once I thought about it in <laughs> hindsight. That's always the way it goes. But like, other other than that, I, I'm I'm looking okay. All right, all right. So I, I believe I'm top ten in the NRG Media oh, Omaha office. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. Well done, sir. Res respectable. Uh, so I saw all my final four alive. Okay. Which are UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, John. I, that's it's giving away the game a little bit. A little I know. Bit. Um, but I have seven of the. Seven of my elite eight are still alive as well. And okay. just like you, Kentucky was the letdown in that spot. So there we go. Uh okay. Let let's get into some of these games. Um, I told you I was gonna give you what my favorite game of the Sweet 16 is. My favorite matchup, and it's two of the teams that were in Omaha. It's Illinois and Iowa State. Oh, this I think this is gonna be a battle. Just yeah. Really good. Both teams look great over the weekend. You've got that suffocating Iowa State defense against Illinois' uncanny ability to score with Terrence Shannon. Like, this is going to be a war. I, I love this matchup. Mm -hmm. You have, like, is there a more fun guy to watch in the tournament than Taman Lipsy for Iowa State? That little dude just flashing around the court, making yeah. plays. Man, darting in there putting his body on the line <laughs> it's it's watching them in omaha I, I mean i got to be there for every day of the tournament when uh last week when it was here and and watching them up close and personal was just incredibly fun um this this is going to be a fun one i think illinois iowa state is the game of the sweet 16 for me sneaky good not like it not super sexy but those are two really good teams um i think I think the ones are going to all win pretty easily. I think UConn's going to walk through San Diego State. This yeah. is a double-digit win. Uh, I think Houston had their wake-up call against AM, and I don't think Duke is good enough to score on them. Um, Carolina's just better than Alabama. Alabama doesn't play good enough defense. Uh, they they like in a without some breaks, Alabama loses to Grand Canyon. Honestly, yeah. 
Um, and I like Gonzaga's had a nice run uh, after not a lot was expected of them, mm-hmm. but I don't think they've got anything for Purdue. So the the ones I think are going to be fairly, I guess, boring. I, I think they're just going to win fairly handily in advance. I agree with this take. Um, I actually like NC State over Marquette now. NC Whoa. State's on some kind of run. They are. Marquette's been vulnerable lately. Um, I thought Colorado kind of exposed some things for Marquette. Marquette had a lot of trouble with them. Look, they they didn't have an easy time against Western Kentucky either. So NC State, if they can jump on them early, I think they can they can pull that one. Um, Clemson, Arizona. I know this is kind of a popular upset pick. Clemson to beat Arizona. Um. I, I'm I'm kind of torn on this one. Like I picked Arizona to go to the Final Four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think Arizona still wins this game. Um, I was kind of down on the Pac-12. Yeah, I, even though I think Arizona's pretty good, I I, I kind of thought okay, if the, if the right matchup comes along, I'll pick someone to beat Arizona. And I I certainly don't think Clemson is it. But Clemson can really score. Mm-hmm. So I I thought Baylor I thought Baylor was pretty good though. Yeah. Too, so. Shows we'll, what I know. We'll see. I mean, that's that's kind of your popular upset pick is, is Clemson the six over Arizona the two. Um, I don't know. I, I still lean towards Arizona in that one. I just don't trust Clemson fully all the way. And then you've got the game we haven't talked about yet, Creighton and Tennessee, the two, three in the Midwest region. Creighton's got the big three. Tennessee. Dalton Connect, the transfer. One of the leading scorers in the tournament. It's um this is this is a really interesting matchup. Um can Creighton defend against Connect? And can Ryan Kalkbrenner get it going on the offensive end. I think that's actually going to be a big key in this one is, is Kalkbrenner's offense. He He's going to play good defense. I think we just, you just have to mark that down death taxes and Kalkbrenner playing well on the defensive end. Can he get going on the offensive end? Now he's, he's been pretty good so far in the tournament on the offensive end. This Tennessee team is, is a little different. They're more athletic, I think, than either of the teams that Creighton has seen so far. Oregon was pretty athletic. I think Tennessee is at a different level, though. This is a tough call. I think this is a really close game. Yeah, Connor and I both don't love the matchup for Creighton. I mean, anything's possible. But, I mean, the Schwab thinks Creighton's going to win. No problem. I have seen several projections of Creighton winning by like one or two points. Yeah. I mean, oh. unfortunately, I think Creighton comes up a little short in this mm. one. I just, mm, Tennessee's really good. So is Creighton. I'm hoping Tennessee does that thing that Tennessee does where they don't live up to the expectations. <laughs> they, hey, that is a real thing. <laughs> that is a very real thing. I also understand it's very abstract and intangible. Uh, but if Creighton can get to the Elite Eight, I think they're going to see Purdue. Definitely. Um, man, that would that would be fun. Zach Eady against Ryan Kalkbrenner. I would watch that. That's for sure. the, that's for a sure. matchup that we would love to see. Bold take by me. I would watch that. I would watch that too. Yeah, I would watch it even if it doesn't happen. But <laughs> um, Creighton, Tennessee. If you got thoughts, give us give us a call nine five one sixteen twenty. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think are the keys to this one. Um, is it me or has Trey Alexander been a little quiet in the first quiet, two games of the tournament? Quiet. Yeah. Uh, certainly hasn't taken over in the way that we've seen him capable of doing. Maybe, so, maybe you get him started early. Yeah. So is this Tennessee. a game? Is this the Trey Alexander game? Ooh. Is this when he goes off for 25 and propels Creighton to a second straight Elite Eight. I I said, again, bold take by me. Let's try that. 
<laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Look, I want Creighton to win this game. It it's good for the city for Creighton to win mm-hmm. this game. And I am famously from Omaha, or not famously, <laughs> not famously. Um, I just it before the tournament started. When I filled out the bracket, I had Tennessee beating Creighton in this spot. I don't feel as confident about it now. Okay. This is, okay. to me, this is the second best game of the Sweet 16. The Both of yep. the 3-2 matchups in the Sweet 16 are the ones that I am most interested in. Creighton, Tennessee, and Illinois, Iowa State. Those two, three matchups. As much as we got on the seating committee... For the way they shaped up this bracket, certainly seems like they did some things right with all the all the, all the chalk we have at this point. Mm-hmm. It sets up good matches later in the tournament. What do I have to do to put you into a Creighton victory today? What do we? What do you have to do? Yeah. Uh, tell me that Joseph Idu is not going to play. I don't know if I can do that. Mm. I mean, I can tell you that. <laughs> I, I, man, it's it's so tough because Dalton Connect can really fill it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, Creighton's got three guys who can do that as well. Zakai Ziegler getting to the rim. Great name. Somebody's got to stay in front of him. It's Jonas. I do not Joseph. I do. Um, so it's sort of a big three against the big three, right? Mm-hmm. Like Definitely. connect. Connect Ziegler and I do against Shireman Alexander and Kalkbrenner. So, I mean, maybe it's somebody off the board. Is this, is this, is it a Stephen Ashworth game? Okay. Mm-hmm. I think if you can get Stephen Ashworth to 18 points, Creighton's got a great chance to win. I would like that. Yeah. You- now that, that means everyone else has to, to, to do their do, normal yes, thing. Yes. But you get if you get Ashworth around the 16 to 18 points, I that means he's making threes. He's mm-hmm. probably running some transition. Creighton's getting turnovers. That's I think it's going to come down to the defensive end for Creighton for me. I think they're going to be able to score on Tennessee. It's Ziegler getting into the lane. Um I do occupying space. And then, you know, Dalton Connect scoring from all over the floor. So the defense for Creighton for me is is the bigger key. I think they'll be able to score. This is a game I think that could be played in the 80s. I think both teams might get to 80 in this one. And if Creighton can hold Tennessee under that number, all the better. So there you go. If if Creighton can can get to 80 in Tennessee's uh well obviously if Tennessee doesn't get to 80 then Creighton would win. But I think if this game is is played in the high 70s, Creighton wins. High 70s, low 80s, I think Creighton wins. If it's not that game, if Creighton's unable to, to get the game out of the 60s, I think it's Tennessee because that means that they're, Tennessee is shutting down the things that Creighton wants to do offensively, and I, I, that doesn't bode well. Got to hold on to the basketball if you're Creighton. Turnovers will be big, as they always are. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping here. During that segment, I took a phone call from the Chicago White Sox organization. Yeah. Nikki would like to join us next. Oh, next. next. Let's do it. Okay. Let's get the break right now. Okay. We're going to talk to Nikki Lopez of the Chicago White Sox, former Creighton Blue Jay, right here on the Connor Happer Show, 1620 The Zone. Now live on Twitch, YouTube, and 1620TheZone.com. His voice is often mistaken for a dial tone. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. I'm still the most uninteresting man in the world. But if you're tired of losing sleep over business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, financial statements and QuickBooks, call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. 
If you're looking for a safe and reliable vehicle to get you through all types of winter weather and more, Baxter Subaru has you covered. Symmetrical all-wheel drive comes standard on nearly all Subaru models and provides you better traction, improved stability, and maximized performance on wet and snowy roads. So hop in the driver's seat of a new Outback, Forester, or Crosscheck now at Baxter Subaru Omaha. Shop our great sales and service deals now during the Subaru A Lot to Love event at BaxterSubaruOmaha.com. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. Progressive presents good news, bad news, dumb news, then great news. Good news. While leaning over the fence, your neighbor said you could save money bundling home and auto insurance with Progressive. Bad news. Your neighbor leaned over a little too much and broke your fence. Dumb news. Somehow fence wood is more expensive than wood wood. Great news. You decide to see if you could save money bundling at Progressive.com and to plant really tall shrubs. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Meet Cheryl. Hey, she's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. It's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and... But she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, N.A. member FDIC. Hey, Omaha, get ready to experience the excitement of the NCAA tournament games right here in our city. Ticketsforless.com is your go-to source for hassle-free tickets. With their transparent, upfront pricing and no added service fees at checkout, you'll know exactly what you're paying for from start to finish. Visit their Omaha office today at 145th and West Center Road or call now at 402-398-1999. As your local ticket experts, TFL is always there to help. Plus, score a special discount when you use my promo code, The Zone at checkout. Don't miss out. Get your tickets today at ticketsforless.com. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. The Storm Chasers open the 2024 season this weekend against the Iowa Cubs. Catch the action all weekend long on your home for Storm Chasers baseball. 1290 Coil. Hey, Omaha dog lovers. Get ready for more wags and more fun. Hound HQ, your dog's favorite spot for daycare, boarding, and top-notch grooming is now open. At Hound HQ, there's plenty of space for a pup to sleep, play, and everything in between. Plus, our expert groomers are here to ensure your furry family member always looks fabulous. Join our pack on Facebook and Instagram at The Hound HQ or visit our website, thehoundhq.com, and sign up your dog today. Hound HQ. More wags, more fun. We got a special treat on the Connor Happer Show. We get to talk to a major leaguer. How about us? Look at us, Josh. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Not me. <laughs> Not me. John Schreiner here with you on the Connor Happer Show. Connor is on his way to Vegas. And that means I get to ask questions of one Nikki Lopez, Chicago White Sox player. Recently traded to the White Sox from the Braves, and now a married man. Nikki, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, so we got to get we got to get to the trade story right away. Um, <laughs> you were traded in November. You were at your rehearsal dinner. Just mm-hmm. just walk us through the story. What happened with you finding out that you've been traded from Atlanta? Yeah, so it's kind of uh, kind of crazy event. Um, <clears throat> but I was, yeah, at my rehearsal dinner and we were, we had a little bit of a lull, um, during dinner where we can get up and take some pictures, you know, in between like appetizers and like the main course. So we're all taking pictures and, um, someone was taking pictures of me and my family and, uh, they were, showed me the phone. They're like, Hey, you should probably take this. And it was Alex. It says on the top, Alex Anthropolis GM from of the bridge. So I'm like, <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, so I answered it. And he's, he's unbelievable. He was just, you know, we, we hate to, that we have to do this. Um, you know, thank you all for all you've done. You know, maybe we'll see you in the future. And, you know, he went on and on. And um, But he's like, hey, we traded you um, to the Chicago White Sox. Uh, and I was just like, 
wow. And this is a day before a wedding. I try to be, you know, not make it about baseball because it's it's always about baseball. And Sydney, my my wife, um, would be the first to say, you know, baseball <laughs> comes um, comes between us a lot. And so I was trying to not make it about baseball. Make it, you know, obviously this is our this is our wedding weekend. And so I got back to the table and I was like, yeah, I just got traded, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll like you know we'll talk about it later. And everyone was like, wait, what? Like <laughs> yeah, we you're not just, getting like, away with that. Over it. Yeah, so they're like, "Well, where'd you get traded to?" And then, of course, I you know, I say Chicago White Sox, and they all were like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm coming home, and um, it was pretty pretty crazy. So you're originally from Naperville, Illinois. Did you grow up a White Sox fan, or were you a, a Cubs kid? So I was actually um, I was a huge Derek Jeter fan. So okay. I watched I I watched countless um, Yankee games. But what I like to tell everyone though is that. During you know field we had field trips to White Sox games. I, w- I went to Game Two of the World Series when the, uh, Scott Pasadnik hit that walk off home run. So like I we we went to way more White Sox games than Cubs games. So um, I guess you could you could say uh, we were we were White Sox fans for sure. All right, so that uh, very cool. You get to come back home, and your wife we should mention is also a former Creighton athlete, Sid Lamberty, former basketball player. Um, yeah. So, have you guys been following uh, the Blue Jays in the men's and women's tournament? We have, we have. We're we're always, you know, looking at you know Creighton athletics, and you know every every chance we can, we try to come back. And I, you know, I go to the alumni golf outings every year that I can. I can be there. I was fortunate enough not to be able to last year since I was in the postseason with the Braves, which was which was um, quite Good reason to miss. Yeah, it was a great great reason to miss. But yeah, Sydney. Uh, Play basketball at Creighton. Um, we met at Creighton, and um, so Creighton is is near and dear to our hearts. And so we we've been following them, you know, in March Madness. And um, it's unfortunate that the girls lost, but they had they had a hell of a season. And um, and then now the the baseball team is even doing really really well too. So it's uh, it's been been fun following uh, Creighton athletics this year. All right, so you get to come back home to the Chicagoland area. Maybe it's not in your diet, but for, for the two people on this show, it's definitely in ours. Who makes the best Italian beef sandwich? Oof. Who makes the Man. There's so many good spots. Because um, there's like Mr. Beef, there's Al's, there's um, Portillo's, obviously. Um, man. You can say Al's. It's fine. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would say Al's. I'm, I'm more of a. So, have you ever had? Have you ever tried a combo by chance? Oh yeah, yeah. Big yeah. fan of the combo. That's my favorite. And and, and Portillo's. I, I mean, I get it all the time at Portillo's, which is the the beef and Italian sausage with sweet and hot peppers. And um, so that's my that's my go to order. So I would have to give I'd have to give them some some kudos. And it is crazy too because I live in Arizona and there's Portillos out there. But it's yep. just when you come back to Chicago though and and have Portillos, it's it's night and day. Josh put it on the board. Nikki Lopez is winning a batting title this year because of all the combos he's eating. <laughs> Whoa, hey now, okay, let's go. <laughs> all right, Nikki, tell us a little bit about uh, how you you found yourself uh, fitting in with the White Sox so far. Yeah, so that was um, it was a pretty smooth transition, and and each you know. I, I've been with the Royal. I was with the Royals for, you know, four, four years. And one thing that has helped this transition is that just being in the big leagues for, you know, the, those four years and being around, you know, playing against these guys. And so when I got traded to the Braves, it was a smooth transition, just being, you know, in the, in the clubhouse with the guys that I've played against for, for four years now. And then I come over to the White Sox and it's the same thing. You know, these guys are, they, they greeted me with open arms. They took me in and, um, a lot of new faces, but it's it's been you know I've been playing against them for four years now, um, being in the AL Central. So it was a smooth transition. Um, a lot of the staff I, I've known from from playing with the Royals, and um, and then some of the some of my teammates were whether they're teammates with the like Ben and Tendy with with the Royals or um, you know with the Braves with KP and and Shu and Soroka. So it's it's kind of it's been it's been perfect. It's been an easy transition, and um, you know it, it makes it makes it that much better to just you know go out there and just play. What have you learned over the last year of playing baseball with the different organizations and the trades? What what have you what have you taken away from each of those organizations? Yeah, I mean, I'm always you know 
the Royals let me live out my dream. Um, they love, love being a big leaguer. And so I'll always, that'll always be, you know, I'll always talk highly of the Royals organization. Um, and so being there, you know, we, we didn't win many games. Um, but I got to, you know, get my feet wet in the big leagues. Um, got to play a lot, got to meet incredible teammates and people. And then I get traded from, from the, uh, Royals to the Braves. And then I was quickly into a driver's seat of, you know, a team that is a 110 win team. And I learned kind of just how to win and I learned what it takes to win and, you know, having routines and, and the way to go about your business when you get to the field that you have to, you know, be dialed in, but also um, not really, you have to, you have to have your routines. You have to, you can't just go and just hope, hope something happens. And, but just being there and working with Ron Washington and then working with uh, the hitting coaches and watching uh, Acuna and Olsen and Riley all take BP and kind of trying to learn a lot from them. And um, it was, it was huge for my career, I think. And so then getting traded over to the White Sox, um, just kind of bringing that, you know, I saw the, you know, both, both sides, the hundred lost teams and a hundred win teams. And so kind of just bringing that, you know, culture and the intangibles that I, I bring, you know, the energy, the, um, and then stuff that I've, I've learned. Um, so it's been, it's been a good transition for, for sure. Nikki, I know you got to run, uh, just want to squeeze in a follow up here real quick. Uh, everyone in the Braves organization speaks so highly of Ron Washington. What is it about him that big leaguers seem to love? He's, he is a, you know, a ball of energy. He is the first one on the field. Um, it's crazy. We can, he's there probably an hour to two hours before we get there. And he's just waiting on the field for, for the infielders to get on the field, come down and do the routines. He has a set routine for all of us every single day. And he's, he said, if you ever miss, you better have a damn good reason why you missed. And so um, every single day go out there and, you know, I don't know how old he is now, but he's every day bringing the energy. Um, and it's, and it's, you know, infectious. It's, you, you feed off of it and um, and he's not slowing down any, any minute now. And he's, he's still going to do it with the angels. And, you know, some of my friends on the angels right now are still saying, you know, they're, he's, he's, he's doing the same stuff over there. So it's, it's pretty special what he does. And I'm, I'm just happy to be able to say that I played for him. All right, Nikki, last, last one here for you. It's a bit of a weird situation. You open the season tomorrow with Detroit, but then the second series Atlanta comes to town and the third series of the season, you go to Kansas City. So your two former teams are two of your first three opponents this season. What do you imagine the emotions being like, especially when you go back to Kaufman? Yeah, it's going to be um, – it's definitely going to be a range of emotions. Obviously, starting with Atlanta, it's going to be great to see those guys. And uh, even though I was there for only half a year, I, I made some great friends and some had some great teammates. So um, we'll be able to embrace them. but. Um, yeah, the emotions are going to be definitely high in Kansas City. I, uh, you know, just obviously the baseball aspect. Um, I, I grew to love them, and and they they took such good care of me. You know, from from the front office to the coaching staff to my t- uh, ex teammates there. Um, still still keep in touch with them uh, to this day. And um, but just like even even outside of baseball, just I, I started my charity there. Nikki's number ones, um, was able to, you know, touch a lot of, um, of people in the community, um, you know, went to children's hospitals and, uh, had, you know, the challenger program and then, the uh, operation breakthrough, um, helping the inner city youth. Uh, so I, even outside of baseball, you know, it, it's a big, it's a big part of my heart. And, and, um, so the, so the emotions are definitely going to be high for sure. Well, we, we certainly appreciate you, you stopping in. I'm a white Sox guy. That's my team. So I'll be rooting for you this season, not just because you're one of our hometown Blue Jays, but because that's been my team since I was a little guy. So certainly congratulations on the move, and we wish you all the best this season. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. That's Nikki Lopez of the Chicago White Sox. That is Now, that is his second appearance on the Connor Happer Show, so we can officially call him our friend. He's a friend of the Connor Happer Show now. Friend Nikki Lopez. True. It's a fact. Mm-hmm.
Well, that was cool. That was a lot of fun. Glad we got to talk to Nikki Lopez. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. What are we doing next, Josh? We go in tweet bag. We go in odd news. What do you think? Um, I think we should probably do the tweet bag. Okay, we'll do tweet bag when we come back. We'll, we'll answer your questions. We'll find some time for the odd news later on in the show. All right. It's Connor Happer Show, 1620 Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubby's downtown in the old market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Maverick Baseball and Softball are underway, and single-game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick Baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha Softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd, and Maverick Baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Get ready for warm weather driving with early spring tire deals at Jensen. Save up to $200 on Goodyear, Cooper, General, Continental, Maxxis, and Kelly tires. Check out Jensen's early spring tire deals at JensenTireAndAuto.com today. So with Souls Jury and Loan dealing with designer bags, what is another option that our clients have if they don't want to actually sell their item? If you're looking to borrow some money, you don't necessarily want to get rid of it. We can hold on to it for safekeeping until you're ready to come pick it back up. Hey everyone, Josh and John here for the FanDuel Sportsbook. The college basketball playoff rolls on, and right now new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. We have lines for this weekend. Of course, my friend John, he'll be in Detroit. Creighton right now, two and a half point dogs versus Tennessee. Maybe you like the underdog. Maybe you like Iowa State versus Illinois. Whatever matchup you like, just go to FanDuel.com slash 1620 today and get in on the action. Josh, whether it is the second weekend or the third weekend of the college basketball playoff, you can get 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and Pick even who's going to win the whole thing. Just visit FanDuel.com slash 1620 and bet on the college basketball playoff until they cut down the nets. 21 plus in President Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Hey, Omaha dog lovers, get ready for more wags and more fun. Hound HQ, your dog's favorite spot for daycare, boarding, and top-notch grooming is now open. At Hound HQ, there's plenty of space for a pup to sleep, play, and everything in between. Plus, our expert groomers are here to ensure your furry family member always looks fabulous. Join our pack on Facebook and Instagram at The Hound HQ or visit our website, thehoundhq.com, and sign up your dog today. Hound HQ, more wags, more fun. If you're unhappy with your job or employer and you've hit a dead end, it's time to start your new career as a delivery driver with Host Coffee. Our local family-owned business is growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. This is the Tweet Bag. You send your questions in and we answer them. Like no other radio segment ever. It's the Tweet Bag on the Connor Happer Show. It's Tweet Bag time. I uh, just want to get to something from the stream. Uh, we asked earlier, what is the singular of White Sox player? Yes. Amazing we, Daniel in the stream asked, what is the plurality of Maple Leafs? Oh, yeah. Is it Maple Leaves? Mm-hmm. Maple Leafs? He's a maple leaf. He's a maple leaf. That's that, that sounds okay. Yeah. 
white sock sounds white sock worse sounds than, weird than but maple leaf he's but but he's are, a white sock or he's a white socks mm -hmm. that neither one is good right it's very odd hmm. we should ask nikki maybe he knows oh yeah all right let's get to the tweet bag okay uh you send us your questions at happer show still time to do so we could probably get you in or uh hit us uh, up on our inbox joshua at 1620 the that's where our first email comes from from kip hello kip is there a movie you feel you are not emotionally ready to watch again mm. iron giant mm. is one for me mm -mm. i refuse to ever watch a movie with a dog in it so those <laughs> don't count for me okay not emotionally ready to watch mm -hmm. again <sighs> do you know the movie closer with uh natalie portman yeah I am familiar. I, I Jude Law, yeah. uh, Clive Owen. Yeah, that is an emotional roller coaster of a movie. Okay. It is. It's a tough hang. So uh, I watched it when I was probably in my mid 20s um, as a single man. You're not in your mid 20s now? I'm not in my mid 20s now. Hmm, interesting. Notably. Um, but as as someone who's in a committed relationship now and married, I don't know that I can watch that movie again. So like, this isn't a very fun answer, but the, the thing, the word association that, that happened to me was, uh, Schindler's list. Yeah. Uh, obviously terrific movie, great movie. Um, very important, but rarely am I like, Hey, you know what? Let's <laughs> pop in Schindler's list and make some popcorn. Yeah. Uh, there, there are certain movies that it's like, okay, I've seen that. Let's cross that off. And yep, I watched it. Yeah. Uh, Requiem for a Dream. See, I love Requiem for a Dream, though. It's a, I, gr it's I, a great movie. I was a big fan of Ar Aronofsky. Mm -hmm. um, he hasn't done much lately that is worth anything, really. But getting into movie talk already. I, I kind of figured it would be a, a <laughs> jump into the deep end yep. for us here. Uh, we go to Plat Cat on the Twitter account. Hello, Plat Cat. Who's Josh? I'm going to let you play too, John. Okay. Who's Josh got winning the women's tournament? Well, pull up my bracket on my on my app here, as I am less than prepared for that question, even though it was right in front of me the whole time. Uh, I got four matchups wrong in the first round. Oh, you did good. Of, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm crushing it. In the women's bracket, I believe I got, uh, let's see, that's, I believe I got uh, 14 of the Sweet 16 teams, right? Dang. Um, so yeah, I'm crushing it over there. Um, you can call it chalk. You can call it whatever you want. I went with South Carolina mm. because they haven't lost this year. I understand <laughs> going into the tournament last year, they also had not lost and yep. ended up did they did lose, but I have, a, I, I'm just rolling the dice, playing the odds that that will not happen twice. Uh, I also have South Carolina mm. as the national champion. Bold. I'm not doing as well on my women's bracket as you are. Okay. Uh, though like the chalk is reigning supreme in the women's bracket. Yes. So I, I actually looked at this the other day. There was one game in the first round where the better seeded team lost. Yes. One. One. And there were three in the second round, and two of those were fives beating fours. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is not a tournament that uh, often has upsets, and this year it was particularly... So, um, it's the only team that's lower than a four or lower than a five in the sweet 16 is Duke at seven and they, they upset Ohio state in the second round. I'm trying to see who I have in my final four. I, for whatever reason, I I'm having trouble reading, which I have South Carolina, Texas, Iowa, and Yukon. I have Yukon, LSU, Stanford, and South Carolina. That's right. None of those teams are Iowa. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. <laughs> we don't need to. We don't need to get into that. What? 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 Um, Matt tweets into the show. Hello, Matt. Since Connor is at a swim up bar right now, what is he your is? go to drink while you're at a swim up bar? 
uh, confession time. Never Ooh. been to a swim up bar. Never have I as well. Uh, but I'll tell you that it's probably well, my like my go to drink is scotch. So I don't know. Do you drink scotch at a swim up bar? Is that, that, that is that I, appropriate? I was thinking, you know, I I like like a like a whiskey drink, but that feels like the exact wrong thing to yeah. order at a swim up bar. Doesn't you would seem need right. like a like a like a seltzer or a fruity fruity drink, something light. Something that tastes good. You know, what? also something that I could drink twelve of in a day and I, not drown. I do like a margarita. Okay, yeah, I, I think a margarita uh-huh. is appropriate. Yeah, like yeah. So at the swim up bar, I'm going to say margarita. Okay, just a standard lime margarita. <laughs> Sicilian stiletto tweets in. Hello, Sicilian stiletto. There you go. It's kind of difficult to say. Uh, what are the odds on who passes out first during the gents? It's Vegas baby tour, <laughs> Connor, Josh, or Nick. Yeah. Uh, this is great. Uh, Sicilian has suggested we turn this into a poll question. I will. Um, it's, it's gotta a be a poll question. I it, like that one. It's gotta be Nick, right? Cause I feel like Connor is, okay. Connor is of Vegas. He's experienced. Yeah. Connor's out. It's Josh. It's, it's between Nick and Josh. Josh is marathon training. So I don't think he's drinking right now, but is he just going to go to sleep because he's marathon training? Oh, okay. So that That's where my head went was uh-huh. like, Nick's Nick's a young man might be able to, to hang a little longer. Is Josh just going to go to bed and kind of lose by default? Lose by default. Less. Yeah. Okay. I think that's where my head's at. If uh, we're talking about passing out from drinking, uh, my money is that Connor wins that. So, I mean, and we don't think that Josh is going to be drinking. So uh, Nick kind of loses in that realm by default. Mm-hmm. But if we're just going overall, who goes to bed first? Josh Peterson. Definitely. Nick's never traveled as an adult as he said <laughs> so he's gonna be like okay i have to experience everything in my short amount of time he's here. got to do vegas yes he wants to tickle the chains as he said <laughs> for weeks now <laughs> yeah uh, no i i think it's peterson i think peterson probably gets the best odds there uh, yeah i think so i'm trying to think of a scenario where something could go haywire and Connor just hits it way too hard. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Just accidentally lets it get away from him. Yeah. Uh, we have some tweets coming in on the uh, movie you're not emotionally ready to watch oh, again. Oh, good. Want to uh, hear these. We can slide in a couple more questions for the tweet bag before we're done here. So don't be shy at Happer Show. Uh, Amazing Daniel tweets in, uh, not sure I'll ever be able to watch the following movies again. Amistad, Leaving Las Vegas, Johnny Got His Gun. Not sure what that last mm, one's about, but I don't know that one either. But yeah, I can a tough hang. Yeah. Um leaving Las Vegas is just perpetually sad. It's just the whole movie is a downbeat. Yeah, and it's Nicolas Cage. Mm-hmm. Not the fun Nicolas Cage. Not not zany Nicolas yeah. Cage. Uh Andrew suggests the boy in the striped pajamas. Great suggestion there. I have not seen that along the lines of Schindler's list. Okay. And all that that implies. That was a really good question. Good job, Kip. Oh, you, you know, a recent one that I will say is Saltburn. Uh, yes, I've seen that. I don't plan on revisiting. That's one that's like, okay, I saw that. <laughs> don't need it again. No, no. Not really. I mean, it's it's worth a watch for sure because it is so shocking. But no, I just no, I'm okay. Uh, we have an email from Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Uh, John, I heard you reference uh, Italian beef with Nikki Lopez yep, in the last. I segment. did that. You seem pretty knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. What is your take on deep dish pizza? My take on deep dish pizza is that it is a separate thing. It is not. I don't really classify it as pizza per se okay i'm i'm kind of along the lines there too we, we always get into these chicago versus yeah, new yeah. york fights and i'm like no they're different things yeah i look i enjoy it i like it i do too but it's a, it's a different it's a different headspace right like mm-hmm. it's not i'm not picking this up with my hands out of the box and shoving it in my face yeah. right this is a sit down knife and fork we're going committed if we're going deep dish. 
and it's good. Like I like it, uh, but it's not it's not traditional pizza. That's my take. I agree. Good take. Good take. It's it's not quite a casserole, but it's you know it's casserole uh, adjacent. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a one layer lasagna. Oh yeah, I love a lasagna, so maybe yeah. that's why I like Chicago you, deep dish. Yeah, pizza. if you don't like a lasagna, mm-hmm. like, just go away. Uh, uh, where's the name on this? Oh, okay. Uh, Joe. Hi, Joe. Uh, sends us a, a tweet. Can we get a sneak preview for tomorrow's MLB predictions? Mm. Uh, we're we're going to do some predictions tomorrow. Uh, if you haven't noticed, tomorrow is Major League Baseball's opening day. People forget. Um, I'm going to withhold some of mine. Go but, ahead. But, but but John, if you if you have some, um, if you don't, that's okay too. So I don't. Okay. I, I have not really paid attention to spring training uh, that closely. So I, I've been heavily involved in basketball. Mm. Um, so I don't. I don't Something really have any going takes. On there in basketball, um, by the way. There there is a thing. Oh, okay. There's a thing. Yeah. Okay couple of things really oh um i don't know i mean look houston is probably gonna be the team to beat again right the braves are gonna be really good uh which is gonna make you happy please make uh, me happy. the dodgers are gonna be really good seems inevitable yeah so i don't know um i i think i would like to see i mean i i hope that the white Sox are better than they were last year just so they'll make me want to pay attention Uh later in the season because honestly, I wait until we're about a month out from the playoffs. I'll check the standings. Okay. I'm, I'm more, I'm a very casual baseball fan. Um, and if the white Sox are in it in the last couple of weeks, I'll start paying a little closer attention. And then I'll, if they're in the playoffs, I'll watch it. And then, so I I'm hopeful that they can give me something to look forward to. Um, but, uh, then that's about all I've got on baseball. Okay, I will. Um, it's so hard to be a fan of a team that's really, really good, like the Braves. And that's not like what was me, but like, because if I come on here and say Braves are going to win the World Series, yeah, everyone's like, "Oh, you're you're a Braves fan, of course you're going to say that." But what if I also actually think that because many, many baseball analysts have told yeah. me the Braves have a really good chance of winning the World Series. What if both things could be true? Yeah, they could be. Could you wrap your minds around this? You're also a homer. I am. I am. Please. It was it was so fun. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> I dare Nebraska football to win 10 games next year. <laughs> uh that's that's the tweet bag, unless you um, unless you've got something. Uh I didn't see any come across my way, so okay. that's the tweet bag. Thanks for sending in your questions. Good bag, y'all. Good bag. Uh until the tweet bag reopens next week. That's going to be the end of the segment for this week. Uh, when we come back, we got to get to odd news. Josh, I think you've got some good stories this week. Am I correct? I do. I am ready when called right. upon. So we'll come back with the odd news with Odson on the Connor Happer Show. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Chris Fetters covering the Washington Huskies joins us. Dannon was in Palm Springs last night with the president of the university and the new football coach that he hired for a major donor event. Literally, that thing wrapped up, and I have to expect that right after that happened, Dannon was in the middle of trying to finalize this deal at Nebraska. Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. We'll have some of those clouds clear out through the Wednesday afternoon hours, but still a fairly cool day, a high of around 43 degrees, keeping clear to partly cloudy skies overnight. Another cold morning, 27 to start your day tomorrow, sunshine throughout the day, and then a high, finally spring-like 62 degrees outside. I'm meteorologist Luke Vickery, KETV Newswatch 7. Hi, this is Doug Nodgaard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, 
is answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally. Member FDIC. Shop Woodhouse Hyundai during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event going on right now. With the most versatile lineup of sedans and SUVs, like the Hyundai Elantra or Santa Fe. Plus, your choice of standard engines, plug-in hybrid, or fully electric vehicles. Right now, lease the 2024 Hyundai Kona SE for $199 per month for 24 months and 12,000 miles per year. And when you shop Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance, America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Start your deal online at woodhousehyundai.com today. Browse our inventory, personalize your payments, apply for financing, and more. Convenience delivered every time. This is Woodhouse Hyundai. With approved credit, tax title license extra, first payment $3,999 down plus $299 doc fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. Welcome to RV Ready. Brought to you by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. Looks like Mother Nature's on the line. I just had to call. We're getting things ready for everyone to head out camping again. Uh -huh. There's so many places to see and so many things to do. And I know Leach Camper Sales can help. You're right. People should go to leachcamper.com and check out the inventory. Oh, and the 2024s are all in. Head to leachcamper.com or stop by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. And don't forget. The coffee's always on. Of course it is. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Lindley Clothing in Omaha has been the premier provider of men's fashion for over 88 years, from suits to jeans with great brands like Jack Victor, Bugatti, Peter Millar. Your father was a customer. You're a customer. Your son is a customer, and now they're looking for the latest sportswear to tailored clothing. Lindley Clothing has you covered. They will help you get the look that you need with their selection and top-notch customer service. You walk in the door, and there's John and Marlene and the entire Lindley Clothing team with a great smile on their face, and they're to help you. 132nd of West Dodge in Linden Market to pick up the latest styles and enjoy easy access shopping. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device off rents 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. And now we've reached the point in the show where Josh Odson reads the peculiar, the bizarre, the comical, the odd news with Odd Son. Odd news, Odd Son. See what we did there? The odd news with Odd Son. Oh, yes, it's time for another edition of your favorite radio segment, The Odd News wow. with Josh Odson. That's some high praise. Now I gotta clear that bar. Thanks for that, John. Well, I didn't say it was mine. I said it was theirs. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we begin with the New York Mets, who are just odd to begin with. Very odd. Uh, the Mets. Hello, Bernie Madoff. Posted a screenshot of a long announcement. One would imagine that it was the latest blunder of errors that seems to follow this franchise, uh, but. This wasn't one of those incidents, and it only took a few seconds to realize the admin of the social media was in on some Mets Twitter lore and Ooh. was indeed trolling at a Hall of Fame level. The Mets posted a screenshot that was an announcement from GENY Mets report 
The announcement was regarding the future of the Mets fan page, which has often come under fire for lifting and stealing everyone else's content without giving proper accreditation. So, as the account was announcing its final send-off and would no longer be in use, the Mets decided to get in on the joke. Some might say punching down. This time, instead of simply retweeting the announcement, which is no longer an active account, the team put a screenshot of the announcement and shared it uh, as an ode to what account owner Grant Papura (laughs) was accused of doing multiple times throughout the account's (laughs) tenure. Oh, Petty. I love Petty. Yeah. Pettiness. Um, it always, it, if it's not involving you, if someone's not being petty to you mm-hmm. specifically, I'm not being petty right now, guys. No, no, so, you are. It's so funny. It is. I love it. It's it great. Uh, we go to Daleville, Ill- Indiana. Excuse me. Dale Daleville, Daleville, Indiana. Right. You're familiar Daleville? with Daleville? Let me look it up. Okay. Uh, a Fisher's man reportedly fled from several different agencies in a Ford Mustang. Uh, before being caught, Michael Anthony Stancato, 20 years young, was arrested Saturday after being tasered by a Madison County Sheriff's deputy following the multi-county pursuit. According to documents, a Daleville police officer clocked Stancato going 84 and a 55 uh, Saturday afternoon. The officer pursued the white Ford Mustang uh, when Stancato laid on the gas and fled at a high rate of speed over 100 miles an hour. The Daleville officer stated, uh, Stancato nearly lost control of his Mustang several times before hitting a curb, Mm -hmm. and that's when the uh, pursuit came to an end as they were uh, cuffing him. They were fighting on the ground. Uh, A taser had to be used. Uh, During that tussle, they told him, oh, you're going 100, you're going 100. Stancato said, no, no, I topped out at 170 at one point. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean this is like this is the uh the ultimate like braggadocio right, right. this so, guy's it's like, such a no way thing. no way i was only going 100 yeah this thing does 170 bro <laughs> <laughs> he like, wasn't going out like that he wasn't letting his his buddies say like see him oh, you got you got arrested at a high speed chase and you were only going to Hyundai. Like, come on, <laughs> come man. On. You told us that car would go 170. He just had to get it on record. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I was going no, 170, no, no, man. No, no. It was totally it was... 170. Uh, Daleville is northeast of Indianapolis, by the way. Okay. Okay. Now we know. Now we know. Uh, finally. But, yeah, oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, the, the car brag. That's so good. I want this in the official record that I was going 170. Let it be known. <laughs> Stang's got, it's got jets, bro. <laughs> uh, we go to Florida for our final story, as we tend to do on the odd news. Uh, this year's Cadbury Bunny. Are you familiar with the yeah. annual Cadbury yeah. Bunny? Every year they name, mm-hmm. like, this is the official Cadbury Bunny. And it uh, clucks like a chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yep. thing. Uh, this year's Cadbury Bunny is a raccoon named Louie. Okay. The Good. first of his species to earn the title. The company announced Louie the Raccoon, a two-year-old pet from Miami, that just fits, was the winner of the sixth annual Cadbury Bunny tryouts and will have a role in the 2025 Cadbury Bunny tryouts commercial, an Easter tradition for the brand. Louie's owner, Jamie, rescued him. Oh, so it's a rescue raccoon. That's good. Uh, adopt, don't shop. Am I right? Uh, rescued him in 2021. For raccoons. <laughs> when he was... <laughs> Deemed unfit to live in the wild, Cadbury said. The raccoon won the hearts of voters on Instagram with his friendly face and his special skill. Is there Mm. a talent portion of the Cadbury tryouts? Uh, Creating paintings. These paintings are then sold to benefit wildlife rescue and rehabilitation centers. A very wonderful cause. Uh, Each year we look forward to crowning a new Cadbury bunny, especially this year where we engaged fans in a new way through our bracket style competition. Oh, see, people love voting in a bracket. Hey, hey, They'll vote for anything. Look, if it's March and you're not doing a bracket at, and you're a brand that is socially oriented, mm-hmm. you're doing it wrong, baby. Absolutely. Uh, Louie follows in the footsteps of previous Cadbury bunnies, including Crash the Rescue Cat, Annie Rose the Therapy Dog, Betty the Frog, 
Lieutenant Dan, the treeing Walker Coonhound, no. and Henry, the English Bulldog. So it appears as though a bunny has never won the Cadbury Bunny competition. Which, can we even call it the Cadbury mm -hmm. Bunny competition? Then? Why not call it the Cadbury Trial? Well, what was the raccoon's name? Uh, Louis. Louis. You know what I have in common with Louis? I was also told by my wife that I'm not fit to live in the wild. <laughs> so there you go. Absolutely. Maybe I can win the Cadbury Bunny. Why not try out? Why not? Well, let's get a human named. I don't really have any special skills. I mean, that's my problem. Can I, you can you mm, paint? I'm not I'm not really cute. I'm not really cuddly. I'm a little fuzzy. Yeah, but, you, got, you got some fuzz too. Yeah, uh, not no special skills though. So, uh, I'm probably a 16 seed at best. Oh, sad. Yeah, it's very sad. Do you think they do 64 whole teams? No, <laughs> but I'm still a 16. Okay. All right. Is that it for odd news? That is the odd news today. Right. That's your odd news with one. Josh Odson. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and we're going to tell you what Clark Hunt said about being graded an F minus as an owner. Did the Chiefs play in a dump? I've heard, but don't disrespect the Chiefs. How does Clark Hunt plan to fix it? We're going to tell you on the other side. It's Gunnar Happer Show, 1620 The Zone. Omaha's most listened to all sports radio station. Again and again and again. 1620 The Zone. There's no need to hunt for the prize eggs. They're waiting for you at the 42 Degrees Easter Sale. Hop on in and fill your basket with drastically reduced prices on premium cannabis, CBD, Delta, premium Kratom, American Glass up to 50% off, and disposables up to 75% off. The Easter Sale at 42 Degrees. Your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service. 42 Degrees by your mom's house. Oddly, he's interesting because he's so uninteresting. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. Don't settle for anyone more interesting. Let's get to work on your business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, QuickBooks and retirement planning. Call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. Lindley Clothing in Omaha has been the premier provider of men's fashion for over 88 years, from suits to jeans with great brands like Jack Victor, Bugatti, Peter Millar. Your father was a customer. You're a customer. Your son is a customer, and now they're looking for the latest sportswear to tailored clothing. Lindley Clothing has you covered. They will help you get the look that you need with their selection and top-notch customer service. You walk in the door, and there's John and Marlene and the entire Lindley Clothing team with a great smile on their face, and they're to help you. 132nd and West Dodge in Linden Market to pick up the latest styles and enjoy easy access shopping. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're going to do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialist. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. Nebraska Cancer Com. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Howdy! Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's 
scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip, and there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time, time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. The Storm Chasers open the 2024 season this weekend against the Iowa Cubs. Catch the action all weekend long on your home for Storm Chasers baseball. 1290 Coil. Josh Renner sitting in for Connor Happer on this Wednesday. Had a pretty good show today. If you missed any of it, you can always check out the podcasts or radio replays, however you like to say it. Go check out that interview with Nikki Lopez. thought he was really good. Fun to chat with one of the newest Chicago White Sox. Our friend, Nikki Lopez. He's our friend now. We're we're pals. Attached at the hip. (laughs) Nikki Uh, and this show. Had Robin wash it. That was a good chat with Robin. So go back and check all that stuff out if you missed it. Uh, But right now I want to get to something that it's been kind of brewing in the background for a while. There was a little talk about it when the report cards first came out. But it was kind of glossed over um, fairly quickly. I think it, it just kind of was mentioned and then kind of pushed aside. It's but, always one of those fun things to yeah. pour over, and then we all forget about it the next yep. day. Um, but Clark Hunt was interviewed by The Athletic about the F-minus grade that he got from the players when they did the report cards for each team. The Chiefs lowest are disrespecting the Chiefs. The lowest possible grade that you could have gotten an F minus as an owner. Uh, and the story from the athletic details a situation uh, last summer where Patrick Mahomes was in the facility filming a T Mobile commercial. And during one of the breaks, he went to the team president. And essentially complained about the facility, saying that there's no AC in here. Wow. They were trying to film a a T-Mobile commercial at the Chiefs facility, and it was so hot that people were sweating through their clothes. Right? And then a couple days later, they had practice in the facility, and Andy Reid sweat through his windbreaker. Now, I feel like that might, that's probably not a hard thing to make happen, but this that, is a hey, sweating multi through billion a, dollar a year organization. Sweating through a windbreaker is an accomplishment. It is. So the the evidence is all there that the Chiefs facilities are wildly out of date. Like perhaps to a dangerous degree when mm-hmm. you're practicing in indoors in what is basically a sauna. Like the temperature in their indoor facility was over a hundred degrees when they were practicing in there. Still won the Super Bowl. They still won the Super Bowl, which is why I think a lot of people brush this under the rug. Sure. Oh, they're winning. Who cares? Who cares? It's a good organization. They're winning. Mm -hmm. And that may be all true, but it doesn't change the fact that the players themselves said, this is unacceptable. Like, if you give something an F minus, that is not just like, eh, it could be better. No, this is... This is aggressively mm -hmm. bad. And all of a sudden, with the changes in NFL ownership, you find yourself at the bottom, a place you probably thought you were safe from with the Dan Gilberts of the world. and (laughs) Yeah. 
not a place you want to be, especially for what is currently the premier franchise in the NFL. Exactly. With the premier player in the NFL. The last thing you want for that guy to be is discontented about his working mm-hmm. conditions. Because you know you're going to have to come up to him at some point and be like, hey, Patty, it's time to restructure. Which they've already done. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and it's the nature of the beast. They probably will again. So th- this was just the second time that the NFLPA has, has re- uh, done this survey of players to grade their working environments. Um, and again, from this report, one of the biggest complaints from the Chiefs was they believed that they had been promised that their facilities and locker room were going to be renovated oh. after the 22 season. That'll do it. Which did not happen. Um, and then you have the quote from Clark Hunt himself personally. He said, quote, I have spoken to some of our veteran players about that, and they've confirmed to me that it was a miscommunication. Certainly, I personally Never said anything to them about renovation of the locker room. It was a misunderstanding. Now, Clark thinks he's covering his behind here. But if you read it a different way. You're kind of telling on yourself there. You are telling on yourself that I never intended to renovate (laughs) the locker rooms. I never told them I was going to do that. You think it's bad. In fact, (laughs) it's much, much worse. So, okay, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a billionaire NFL owner with the best team in the league who continually wins championships and has the best player. And the locker rooms are F minus. I don't know about you. That seems wildly inappropriate. Yeah, I imagine uh, Clark has seen, I don't know, maybe a windfall of profits that he might. I and I understand this would be a wild idea that a billionaire go, hmm, I've made a lot of money off of these players the last few years. Why don't I put a little bit back into them? I understand. Wild, wild concept, but maybe you do that. It's not a good look either way. Uh, one of the interesting... I'm. In hindsight, I'm kind of glad this survey exists because Robert Kraft also saw that he got a poor score and said, oh, I had no idea my players felt this way. Okay, here's the upgrades that I'm going to make. So it seems to be creating some real change within the league. So then there are some quotes from Willie Gay, which again are telling on the situation a little bit. So the first quote from Willie Gay says, we're winning Super Bowls, so at the end of the day, how much can we argue? Hey, the facility's falling apart, but we won the second Super Bowl in two years. <laughs> but then the, the quote later, he says, money was spent very tightly around there. When we did get something, whether it was a chair or a T-shirt, it was like, man, we got new chairs. That was a big upgrade. We enjoyed the small things that we got. So all of this points to the Chiefs franchise being incredibly miserly. Right? You're asking these players to go out and lay their health on the line, which they do. And when they do and they win and they bring you huge revenues, you got them some new chairs. I mean, hey, come I, on. I could have done nothing, guys. Aren't you happy with the chairs? It's a nice chair. It's not the nicest chair, but I, I mean. <laughs> we got new t-shirts. Is this a high school locker room? <sighs> what is going on? Like, and, and you know, now they're, they're talking about all these renovations um, with the Royals planning to move and build a new ballpark. The Chiefs are planning to renovate their 52-year-old stadium, by the way, which is going to host World Cup matches in 2026. Mm -hmm. And look, does anything say 1960s-era architecture and technology 
than a football shaped video board. <laughs> I mean, you see that thing on TV. Yeah. How do you not cringe? I, because I'm not dated. I'm not a Chiefs fan, and I see that thing, and I'm like, ooh, yikes. Come on. You could do something else, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be in the shape of a football. It's a little on the nose, isn't it? <sighs> yeah. You you got the World Cup coming in there. They're doing this big uh I, like a typical American, I saw an article, I did not read it, about how the Chiefs uh yes on prop one sort of campaign to get the stadium renovation is a little a little cringy. Mm. And then so here's the another part of this that really irks me is the article goes on to explain about the projected renovations to Arrowhead Stadium which are expected to cost $800 million. That's a lot. Clark Hunt said he and his family can contribute $300 million. Guess where the rest of that money's got to come from? The fine citizens of Kansas City? Exactly. Mm. The Jackson County Sports Complex Authority, which is certainly taxpayer-funded, is is expected to offer $260 million. And then they're going to get $200 million in economic relief by eliminating the obligation to pay stadium insurance. I'm going to need you to explain that one to me. That sounds unsafe, what you're saying there. And next Tuesday, Jackson County, Missouri is voting on a three-eighths of a cent sales tax to raise money for the stadium renovations. Okay. Three-eighths of a cent. Yeah. That doesn't sound like very much. It doesn't sound like very much. But I assume it's on everything. On everything that gets sold. Okay. Certainly that would tally up very quickly. So here we are again with the billionaire owner coming to the public, hat in hand. Tears in their eyes. Walking with a crutch. Asking to just drop a few coins in the coffer, please, sir. Just whatever you can spare. I'm but a humble billionaire sports owner. I'm a humble legacy owner. I ask my players to play in a rundown dump of a facility. <laughs> this stuff just gets under my skin so much. I love the idea of uh, Clark padding down his chest and his pockets going... <laughs> I got three. I got three hundred. Three hundred. That's, that's all. That's Sorry. all I got. I don't have any more on me. I'm strapped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good night. What is going on? But gee, if only their players were, you know, constantly asked questions by the media and did very successful podcasts where they could talk, a, hmm. speak out against their owner. Hmm. Wouldn't that be fun? It would. Come on, Travis, don't be a coward. So Clark Hunt has committed to communicating better with his players in the future. That's not even, hey, I'll consider some upgrades. That's There will not be any miscommunication between us in the future. I'm no longer going to tell you that I'm going to fix these things. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Like that's the nail in the coffin, right? Like he didn't say, no, we're, you know what? We saw the results. Mm -hmm. We've heard the players. We understand. We didn't know that it was as bad a situation as it was. We didn't know that they felt this way. We're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do whatever we have to do to give our players a world-class facility for their world-class athletic exploits. A very easy statement to make that many right? owners have made in the past. And instead he said, I'm committing myself to communicating better with my players in the future. They will never be under the impression that we're upgrading this when we're not. I don't know, man. It, it seems <laughs> it seems pretty shady to me.
He's saying it without saying it. And I know, I know someone's in their car right now thinking, well, Patrick Mahomes makes millions and millions of dollars. Why doesn't he do it? Because he shouldn't have to. It's, it's not his facility. I don't pledge to upgrade NRG Media <laughs> Omaha, but trust me, I walk around this building all the time <laughs> complaining about upgrades that we need. Did you do it? Did you fill out the survey? I, I filled out many surveys, <laughs> many a survey, many uh, emails sent. Yeah, it's but a, also, trust me, I'm under no miscommunication mm, that upgrades will be made. Yeah, it, it's a, it's an interesting story, and and uh, I don't think that even though you know he, Clark Hunt is out here trying to explain himself, I, I don't. I think he's made it worse actually with the things that he said. Saying I never promised them they they were mistaken. I never promised to upgrade the locker room, <laughs> and in the future I'll do better at communicating that. That I have no intentions of fixing the problem. Yeah, doesn't sound great, Clark. You serious, Clark? <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We got a top five, Josh. Um, yes. All right, I can whip something up. All right, <laughs> okay. Top five worst owners in sports coming Ooh. up from Josh Hodson. Uh, it's Connor Happer Show on a Wednesday, 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubbies downtown in the old market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubbies has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubbies Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers, offers exterior solutions that help you protect your number one investment. Whether it's roofing and siding or windows and doors, they're committed to excellence, quality, and outstanding customer service in every step of the process. When it's time to protect the exterior of your home, your choice is simple. Turn to who the Huskers turn to, JTEC Construction. Check them out online and schedule a free estimate today. JTEC Construction. The official exterior experts of the Huskers. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lana Hawn Nurseries, 192nd and Center. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call one 800 238 Three, three. That's Mike saying good morning. It's the best he can do right now. Yeah, not a cloud in the sky. What Mike could use is a fresh start. And Irish Spring Body Wash. The fresh scent of Irish Spring and those sensational Irish Spring suds are just the reset Mike needs. Now he's ready to go to work. It's Sunday. Irish Spring. When the spring hits you, you're ready. Pick up Irish Spring at Walmart today. Meet Cheryl. Hey. She's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. It's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and But she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools to help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. With Progressive Snapshot, you could save on auto insurance rates by driving safely, which is great because you're rarely rewarded for just being you. Ever get rewarded for being left-handed? No. You get to use weird scissors. Your reward for being a Capricorn? Cold birthdays that conflict with the holidays. And your reward for quickly responding to every work email? More emails. 
But with Snapshot, even left-handed Capricorns with proper email etiquette could get rewarded for good driving. So download the Progressive app today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates. Snapshot not available in all states or from all agents. There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. Anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day. And it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Oh, man. I just saw something. Yeah, yeah. Read those That off. just made my jaw drop. Uh, LSU Pro Day. Malik neighbors, these numbers are eye popping. 40 yard dash, 4.35 seconds. I know. 42 inch vertical and a 10 foot, nine inch broad jump. Wow. That's pretty good. That is, that is nuts. And someone's going to take a wide receiver before him. Yeah. The Cardinals. Yeah. That, that is silly. I mean, the level of athleticism in these dudes that that get to the NFL is just insane these days. It's wild to think about that fast, that strong. I remember you know, when I ran a four eight in high school, I was like, dude, I was cooking. You ran a four eight in high school? <laughs> I did. Yeah, John, what are you doing here? I was a starting running back. My goodness. I ran a 4.8. Wow. Anyway. I'm looking at you different now. I am not uh, I am not on today's top five. I'm sure of that with my 4.840. That's probably now closer to a 5.8. <laughs> but Josh Hodson has a top five. I do. I do. He's uh, he's still putting it together over there. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, it's mostly right. All right. We're going to go top five worst owners in sports. Ah, uh, he took my suggestion. How I did. sweet. I did a little, you know, it, it, this is a great list for this type of segment because it changes. It ebbs. Yeah. It flows. All right, let's with, do it. With the ownership. Let's uh, see who's bad. We begin. Number five. Gosh, come on. Take forever. Number five. This one's really more of a personal choice. Oh. Not necessarily because everyone raves about the facilities and all and all that i just don't think this person is very good or good at their job okay and that would be jura jones mm. of the dallas cowboys famously have not had playoff success yeah I, I, in about 30 years seems to me an outsider a non-cowboys fan he's a little too involved yeah maybe let the maybe let the youngs <laughs> make a decision or two just just saying. Maybe you should hire you as an advisor. Oh, I would love to be an advisor of the Cowboys because I'd just run them into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you don't want Malik Neighbors. No, nope. don't draft that guy. Nope. Remember when the Raiders drafted that super fast guy early in the draft? Yeah, you haven't seen him. You know who we should look at? This quarterback from Alcorn State. That's the guy. Worked for Steve McNair. He did. I 
You remember Steve McNair? Yes. Yeah, you of course you remember Steve McNair. So yeah, just just a personal choice. I, I I imagine if I lumped all the owners together, he's probably not in the bottom five actually. But, yeah, but I don't have qualms with him with yeah. you putting him in there though. I don't. He's high profile, and that's not always good. Number four. Uh, 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 uh. Number four, we go to the Mile High City, Ooh. the uh, collection of gentlemen running the Colorado Rockies into the ground, the uh, <laughs> the Monfort brothers. Mm. Um, that's what 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 the hell? <laughs> that's not a good situation. What, what are they doing there? You know, most of the time, uh, you can kind of like, okay, this team is is fading all of its assets it's liquidating itself to to hit rock bottom so that it can bounce up a little quicker i don't know that the rockies are doing that they want me to think that they're trying but they're not actually trying just when you think they've dropped the shovel <laughs> they pull another one out of their back pocket yeah, yeah yeah i don't they keep digging i don't get it i don't get it not not a great look i'll see your hundred losses and raise you 120 <laughs> what what if we had the most losses ever <laughs> That would be a significant achievement for this. Oh, a record's a record. Freshman? Yeah, a record's a record. They're talking about us. That's all that matters. What if I told you there were two other baseball owners on this list? <laughs> I would not done? be surprised. Okay. <laughs> three combination of three and five. Number three. Let's go to uh, Los Angeles. Mm. Artie Moreno. Los Angeles Angels. Another pretty, team, pretty easy pick. Ask. Yeah. What? What the hell? Um, now, some of the things not necessarily his fault. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, both very good at baseball. Famously, not busts. Famously. Now, some of the other signings have not worked out. But mm. every everyone who I, I I talk to that follows the Angels says this is a horrible mess of a situation, and I want out. They, uh, I mean, is there any more perennial underachiever than the Angels? Like, you can talk about the Cowboys being underachievers, mm -hmm. but they're at least making it to the postseason a lot of the time. They're just not winning when they get there. The Angels are have for so long been like, okay, it's a really talented roster. Angels might put it together this year, and they fall flat. Always. They just face plant. Not even like, oh, it's, you know, we had one one thing break wrong and our whole season nope. was kaput after that. Nope. Like, they're out of it by Father's Day. <laughs> yeah. I, and to me, that sounds like when you have an immense collection of talent and arguably the two best baseball players on the planet at one point, and you can't do anything with that. Like you can't, you can't build around those mm -hmm. guys. Like there have to be players who wanted to come and play with them, right? Right. Like, oh, it would be so easy to go to uh, Los Angeles. It's not a small market. It's not. It's not Tampa. It's not sorry, Kansas City. And the oh, I'll go. I'll, I'll get to live in L.A. I'll get to play with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. Yes. Why would I not sign up for that? We'll make the playoffs in a in a in a in a cinch. Yeah. That that to me points at culture. Mm -hmm. And culture starts at the top. Something and so right. the assessment uh, of of him being one of the worst owners, dead on. Thank you. Thank you. But the worst baseball owner. Oh. Two. Number two. Oakland A's owner, John Fisher. Yeah, it's a tough look. Moving a team to Las Vegas in this economy <laughs> is a slam dunk. Vegas wants teams. They're acquiring them left and right. And they have said no thank you to the Oakland Athletics. You keep releasing these artist renderings. Don't know what you're doing there. We don't want you. <laughs> also, why is your stadium made out of glass in a literal desert? Um, it's, a, uh, it's a nice artist rendering of mm -hmm. a stadium you got there. It'd be a shame if some city didn't want it. That's right. John oh. Fisher watched Major League and said, I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Absolutely. Yeah, what a great that, idea. <laughs> that wasn't a blueprint. 
you're, su- you're supposed to feel for the the lowly players and manager of the Cleveland baseball team in that movie. Not identify yeah. with the owner. Yeah. Not, you know that that lady in that movie had some bright ideas. <laughs> you know what? I think we could pull that off because our players will never get good enough players that would be able to do that. That's right. We can do it. Our hot tub already doesn't work. <laughs> And like that, the the sad thing is, is that franchise has diehards. Oh yeah, they have fans. Oh yeah, right that, here in Omaha, our very own Rusty Lord, Oakland A's fan that would love to support that team. Mm-hmm. They're just giving them no just reason can't. to. Michael Brunts, friend of the show. Oh, Michael, so sorry for you, man. A's fan, mm. and that's the thing. Everyone feels bad for him. Like yeah. nobody's like, good. The A's deserve that. <laughs> They deserve to die. <laughs> no, no one says that. Not the worst owner, though. Mm. I got one better. You got one better. I got one better. Comes to us from the National Basketball Association. Make it so, number one. Number one. I guess he owns a hockey team, too. So you technically in the NHL. James Dolan. Mm. The rocker himself. Is his band any good? No. No. Is his basketball team any good? No. No. They're trying. Pretty good in those NBA standings right now, but that's not because of him. That's in spite of him. They're a four seed right now in the East. But, But when you think of bad owners, dysfunction within an organization, oftentimes the Knicks come up very quickly. They certainly do. I mean, he, he kicks legendary alumni out of Madison Square Garden routinely. Maybe uh, maybe cut out the distractions, Jim. <laughs> maybe focus on just owning things. I, I think but, you're you're doing fine. Yeah, you're own you're the owner of an NBA franchise. You don't need a best selling record. Which you're not getting. Not going to get. The The thing about like, the Knicks and the Nets, for that matter, like New York is a basketball crazy city. Mm-hmm. The, the Knicks, whenever they're remotely good, their playoff runs are like, oh my gosh, there's always stories from yeah. inside and outside the arena. Remember I know. Bing bong. I know baseball is a big deal in New York, mm-hmm. but I would argue like if the Knicks and the Nets ever got good, they would dwarf whatever's happening in baseball in that city. The the Knicks could be second to the Yankees in that town if they were, if they had a chance. If they were competent, yeah, yeah. If it looked like they were trying, mm-hmm. yeah. The, I look. It's hard for me to disagree with that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's you have a golden calf and. Or a golden goose, rather. Mixing metaphors here. <laughs> a golden goose. And you're just throwing the eggs mm-hmm. into the ocean. I, I don't understand. Like I, I can't figure out why the Knicks have been so bad for so long. James Dolan, you're worth $2 billion. You could be worth three if you were good at your job. Mm. Imagine that. Now, Andy on YouTube here. Okay, Andy. Is... What do you got? He's campaigning hard for Jerry Reinsdorf, mm. who uh, I, I believe deserves mentioning. He's honorable mention for on, sure on this list. Uh, now, if you were now, I put Jerry Jones on there as a personal yep. decision. Maybe if we were doing like literally the worst owners, sure. Which I understand the confusion. A lot of hatred for Jerry Reinsdorf about yeah. the '90s Bulls too. Yeah, but broke I that mean, thing up and hasn't bothered to tinker with it since. No, not really. And uh, a good friend of mine who was a Bulls fan in the 90s, mm-hmm. huge, like we all were huge Bulls fan, um, now hates that team. <laughs> and he blames Jerry Reinsdorf. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, the Blackhawks are not without their troubles lately. And all that that implies. Uh, the White Sox are just hiring former Royals executives. Mm. Seems like an odd decision. But they did trade for Nicky Lopez. They did. And uh, a lot of other people behind the scenes used to work in Kansas City there. I, I, have no, I have no issue with putting Jerry Reinsdorf on here. 
not a lot of success has come from his organization. No, no, except that one time. That that one time. Well, I guess technically two times. In 2005. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Wow. I forgot the White Sox won a World they Series. They did. 2005. It's been a while. Yeah. Blackhawks were good in the early 2000s. Yeah, that was a fun run. Chelios. But, no, I... I yeah, he could certainly be included. Mm-hmm. There, there are some bad owners. Des- definitely deserves discussion. And Josh ranked the top five. If I you did. missed the top five, go back and catch it on the pod. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. Got some more things to chat about before we get to movie talk. Coming up in about 30 minutes or so. Um, there's a ranking. There, there was a bracket. Surprising. Mm, bracket. The, the best stadium in college football. Okay. We'll ask you, where do you think Nebraska came in? Number one. Where were they seated in that bracket? Ooh. We'll get to it next. It's Connor Happer Show, 1620 The Zone. You get a lot of junk in your inbox. This one, not junk, not junk at all. 1620 The Email. Exclusive content, contests, other stuff probably. Subscribe today at 1620thezone.com. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. We'll have some of those clouds clear out through the Wednesday afternoon hours, but still a fairly cool day, a high of around 43 degrees, keeping clear to partly cloudy skies overnight. Another cold morning, 27 to start your day tomorrow, sunshine throughout the day, and then a high, finally spring-like 62 degrees outside. I'm meteorologist Luke Vickery, KETV Newswatch 7. Hey, it's Happer for the FanDuel Sportsbook, and we are post-first weekend, which probably means your bracket is busted. But no need to fear. FanDuel is here for you. You can bet on every game of the tournament. So whether you're betting on UConn to win the national championship or someone more local to win the national championship, you can do that. Or each individual game, point spreads, money lines, and so much more available for you on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. To take a look at our games for this weekend. Plenty of options for you. Great matchups all across the board. You win your first $5 bet, and that's $200 in bonus bets for the rest of the tourney for you. All you have to do is head to FanDuel.com slash Happer and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. FanDuel.com slash Happer. 21 and over, present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now with travel bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanaha Nurseries. 192nd and Center. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Maverick Baseball and Softball are underway, and single-game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick Baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha Softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd, and Maverick Baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for up to half the cost. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up! 
and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular single line 1, 5, and 10 gig data plans with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single line postpaid unlimited talk text and data plans offered by T-Mobile and Verizon January 2024. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Here comes the clown. Rolling on through the final hour of the Connor Happer Show here today. Connor's in Vegas. That's why you're hearing me. Yeah, they will be uh, doing the crossover live from Vegas today. So Love that. Connor not appearing on his own show today. But, but we'll be appearing on a show. On a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh. Uh, John. You have some winners. I do. Uh, if you've been listening to the station, you're aware we've been running a censored 1620 contest where, uh, you know, you get your name in the pile. We pull names out of the pile. We it's hand- a sweet contest. It, very. You, we handcuff you to uh, one of the 16 remaining basketball teams. And if that team wins the national championship, you win $1,620. Now, it's not all or nothing. If you finish second, you'll win $500. If you finish third or fourth, so if your team makes the uh, the remaining group of four teams that get to go to uh, the Phoenix area. Some would say there's a finality in that group. There is. Uh, you would win $162. So 25%. Of the people we pull out of the pile are going to win something. That's those are great odds, right? Pretty good. Okay, you so gotta love your chances. We named five winners and teams on Sharp and Hanley this morning. We will name five more on Unsportsmanlike Conduct today. Does anyone have UConn yet? Uh, yes, UConn. Uh, Sarah. Okay, has UConn. Sarah, love your chance. Love your chances. Yeah, she's she's got to be feeling great about that. We here on the Connor Happer show have six. We're, we're the, we get to name six winners of this contest. So I have the names and the teams in front of me. So if you entered our censored 1620 contest, listen up. If your name is Tom Nunn, you are handcuffed for the rest of the tournament to the North Carolina Tar Heels. Oh, you got a one, Tom. Yeah. You got a one. Uh-huh. You drew a one. Uh huh. Uh, Jim Buckley, if you're listening, you are now the world's largest fan of the Illinois fighting Illini. Okay. Illinois. You're a big Terrence Shannon fan now. Yep. Whether you like it or not, uh, Matt Willis, if you, you did enter the censored 1620 contest. All right, Matt. Now this could create a strange bedfellow. I don't know where Matt Willis's rooting interests lie. But he is now rooting for Iowa State to win oh, the national championship. Okay, um, I look Iowa State, good team, mm-hmm. great defense. They looked great. Midwest. Yep. Mm-hmm. T.J. Otzelberger, good coach. <laughs> uh, I'm stealing your thunder there. That's okay. Chuck Vanna, uh, and if I'm mispronouncing anyone's names, I'm sorry. I, I also believe they've been contacted before. I've read their names on the radio. Uh, Chuck, you can call Chuck Cinderella. Oh, he's from got here the on 11. Up. That's right. Uh, DJ Burns and them boys from NC State. If they can win the national championship, Chuck wins $1,620. Uh, Daniel Pulowski, again, this could be a weird, I don't know who Daniel roots yep. for. Mm-hmm. Marquette. Maybe, okay. maybe Daniel's a Creighton fan and now has to root for Marquette. Maybe he's not a Creighton fan and, and really he, wants to yeah. root for Marquette. Yeah, maybe Daniel's a Nebraska ball fan and is like, okay, yeah, go Shaka. And uh, finally, our sixth and final contestant, Jeffrey Weiss, Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Okay. Maybe, okay. maybe like two months ago, they didn't even think they were going to make the tournament. Tough draw with Purdue. Now they're mowing people down. But Purdue famously likes to exit the tournament early. That's right. Gonzaga famously does not like to exit the tournament early. So, you know, maybe Jeffrey likes his chances. Wouldn't now. wouldn't it be funny if this is the Gonzaga team that wins the national title? <laughs> <laughs> it, it would. It would be just so NCAA basketball yep. tournament. They had been... the four years of Drew Timmy, mm-hmm. had all the, the star power, couldn't get it done. And then this team of kind of under the radar not household names mm-hmm. and they would go on to win the title. That would be hilarious. It would. 
Now, during unsportsmanlike conduct this afternoon, Purdue, Duke, Houston, Tennessee, and Creighton oh. will receive their... Of course, they uh, saved Creighton for last. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, they probably thought John Bishop was going to be on the show today. Probably. He's not. He's not. I don't think so, at least. Yeah, he's traveling. He's, they're, yeah, they're, they're he's going. on the way to Detroit. That's right. Going to get him some Detroit-style pizza. Which I enjoy. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. I like it. Not bad at all. All right. So thank you for indulging me there. No, nope. yeah, John. absolutely. Yeah. It's the the very cool and normal 1620 unnamed, not affiliated with any other organization That's basketball right. contest. That's right. Just the, so we make that clear. You know, in this time of the, the big dance, we are dancing around many lawyers. Mm. You like how I did that? I, I, I did that like was, that. That was, was very good. good. Yeah. Deftly done. Uh huh. You're a regular Fred Astaire <laughs> dancer. Okay. Uh, now, whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, I, I just want to quickly get to this thing that popped up this morning. Um, it's sports gambling, which so many stories about sports gambling stuff. Obviously, the Shohei Otani story is front and center. What the hell is going on in that story? We, we have will no never, idea. We'll never know. Uh, you have the center for the Toronto Raptors being benched because of irregularities around player props. Um, apparently there was a game where he subbed out after two minutes due to an apparent eye injury and sat the rest of the game, said he couldn't come back in and play. And then there were a rash of bets before the game on his over under three pointers made and the under had a lot of the action on it. And a lot of people want a lot of money on him going under that total for the night it was like an irregular amount of bets on his under for the three pointers okay. so there there's a big investigation going on there with him and a lot of people believe espn isn't really talking about this as much as they did the yeah. nfl ones is because they're now in the betting game yeah they're they're involved in that uh but the ncaa is ready to respond uh charlie baker the president of the ncaa says he wants to ban prop bets in college sports. No more player props in the college games. Uh, his quote is, the NCAA is drawing a line on sports betting to protect student-athletes and to protect the integrity of the game. Issues across the country these last several days now show there is more work to be done. Now, there are several states who uh, have banned prop bets on college games already. Ohio, Vermont, and Maryland um, are the notable ones. Uh, but the NCAA is asking all states to ban prop betting um, on college games. Uh, Loyola, Maryland coach Tavares Hardy resigned earlier this month um, after they removed a program, a person from the program for gambling violations. So, look, something has to be done um, with the availability of sports betting. Now, I didn't ever think that it would be to such a great degree in the pro ranks at this day and age. Now, in the 60s and 70s, it might have been a bigger deal, like mm -hmm. the Pete Rose thing. Those players weren't making nearly as much money back then as they are now. But today, if you're a professional athlete and the kind of money you're pulling in, it just it doesn't make, pun intended, sense nah. to, to do that. You put your career and, and earning potential in jeopardy. So I didn't ever feel like the the professional ranks would, would be someplace that that would be a big deal. Now it has hit the professional ranks a little bit. Uh, you know, the Toronto Raptors center story, number um, of NFL players have been suspended. Some NFL players have, have been suspended for that. Uh, John Tay Porter is the, the center for the Raptors. who's under investigation. The college realm was where I always thought it might be a little bit more prevalent because those, those guys, a lot of them not making, very much money, if any at all. You know, they are getting some NIL things now, but that's mostly reserved for the top 1%. And there's so many teams that play college basketball. Yeah. Like, is anyone really noticing? And I'm sure Vegas is, but is anyone really noticing an irregularity in the Lehigh Bucknell game? <laughs> like, I, I don't think anyone would notice if a player from Bucknell wanted to manipulate things I'm just using Bucknell as an example obviously I'm not well famously they are you know dirty cheats but oh yeah Buck tell ask a Kansas fan they'll tell yep. you 
Bucknell cheats. So, so here we go. And the NCAA wants to. I, I kind of like this. Just cut this off. Like, cut the head off the snake. Mm -hmm. No more player prop bets. Let's not get into a situation where we have any questions of the integrity of the game. And look, it's probably a good idea. We're talking about what is. I mean, it's still considered amateur athletics. Yeah. Um, betting if, on the the spread and the total. You know, there's more than one player who can control those things, mm -hmm. and if not everybody's in on it, then it's probably going to be harder to pull off. But if you're betting on what a single player can do, that's more easily manipulated. Mm -hmm. And if you're, I don't know about you, John, you're a little smarter than me. When I was 20, 21, 22, if some guy in a nice suit came up to me and said, hey, kid, I'll give you $10,000 if you don't score 20 points tonight, I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sure, absolutely. I'd say, Sounds buddy, great. I haven't scored 20 points in my entire <laughs> life. You, you got haven't watched me. <laughs> you haven't watched me play ball, have you? Uh, yeah, so this is probably a good idea. Um, does it limit the public's availability for certain bets? Yes. Is that necessarily a bad thing? I don't think so. Um, because sometimes you just have to do things for the reason of safety mm -hmm. so let let me talk out of both sides of my mouth here okay uh when caitlin clark was chasing the scoring record there were a number of props like hey what quarter is she going to do it in what style of shot is she going to do it in i think she's at a level where that's okay sure like she's famous enough to where she's not as influenceable I guess then, the, the, yeah, you know, that's my own naivete. Seven hundred ninety thousand dollars in NIL money this yeah. year, and you know, going to be number one pick in the WNBA. Going to make, you know, Ice Cube just offer five million dollars to play in the Big Three. Like, I don't think she's hurting for money. I don't think that's I don't about think twenty times more her. than she makes. She would make in salary in the WNBA. That's right. Anyway, um, that's that's our gambling story for the day. Uh, Probably if you if you like player props in college sports, get them in now because they're probably going away. I heard a player, uh, not a player, a uh, fan behind me at the games, and I was famously very close, <laughs> uh, yelling at Terrence Shannon. I need I need three more points from you. I need three more points. So he had clearly placed a prop on yep. Terrence Shannon Jr. Hmm. Uh, the other story that I wanted to just quickly touch on the newsletter. Until Saturday, which is an offshoot of the athletic, uh, has a best stadium in college football bracket. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a shot, Josh. Can you name any of the four one seeds? I don't want them all. Just give me one okay. that you think is a one seed. Mm, I have not visited many. I'll throw it out. Uh, Rose Bowl. Between the Hedges, Alabama, Ole Miss. Rose Bowl okay. is correct. I got a one seed. Okay. Is the number one seed in the West region. Sure. These are eight team brackets. The number one in the Northeast is Michigan Stadium. Okay. The okay. big house. Number one in the Southeast is Tennessee's Neyland Stadium. Really? Okay. And number one in the middle. They just have a middle section. <laughs> Couldn't possibly call it the Midwest. Just has to be the middle is Texas A&M's Kyle Field. Oh, Trev Alberts. Trev Alberts, yeah. Any guesses? Nebraska's in the middle section. Middle region. Middle region. Are they playing Texas A&M in the first round? Any guesses as to what their seed line is? One through eight. One through eight. Um, I will say four. Not bad. They were a five. Okay. Nebraska was a five seed. You know, those seedings, they're always, you know, not. Just like the committee yeah. always mm -hmm. does, there's got to be a storyline. So guess who the four seed is? Texas? Oklahoma. Oklahoma, okay. Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial. Respect to the Sooners. And in that first round matchup. Oh, it's over already? The first round and second round are done. Oh we're, we're down to the, the Elite Eight in this. Is thing. this a fan vote? Um, Yes, it is a fan vote. Okay, yep. Huskers tend to hijack those. That's yep. good. That's yep. good. In the first round. Nebraska's Memorial Stadium against Oklahoma's Memorial Stadium. So many Memorial Stadiums in this bracket, I bet. The fifth-seeded Nebraska Cornhuskers pulled the upset. Start the court! To the Sweet 16 in the stadium bracket. Now, wow. 
In the second round, they drew the two seed in the region. Oh, no. LSU's Tiger Ooh, Stadium. Okay. Death Valley. And our beloved grand old lady fell by the wayside sure. to Tiger Stadium. Okay. That's, that's, that's tough to beat. I've heard that's a great environment. Now, the ones are all into the Elite Eight. Michigan Stadium, Neyland Stadium, Kyle Field, Rose Bowl. Uh, in the Northeast, Beaver Stadium. Penn State and Michigan showdown to get to the Final Four. Oh, Big House has got that all day. Yep. Uh, in the Southeast, it's Neyland and the five seed, Jordan Hare. Auburn Stadium, oh, okay. all the way from the five seed. They knocked out Bryant Denny, the two seed of Alabama. There was an Iron Bowl? Yeah, there was an Iron Bowl. With, and Auburn market. won it. Okay. Uh, big upset in the West as well. Autzen Stadium is into the Elite Eight. Okay. Oregon. I, uh, tough they, place to play. Big Ten's going to have to get used to that place. They took down, which I think was a little overseeded, the LA Memorial Coliseum. Okay. That mm-hmm. that that's a week two yeah. for me. So Autzen and the Rose Bowl showdown in the West. And then uh, of course Kyle Field and Tiger Stadium in the middle. So you can go and check that out at the Athletic if you want to vote on what is the best stadium in college football. But I, th- I just thought that was a fun little thing. Um Nebraska a five seed in the middle region. Um I think that, that speaks to maybe that there need to be some stadium renovations, do you think? Or, I mean, does it speak to there not needing to be stadium <laughs> res- renovations if it's still... If it's still a five, yeah. I, I suppose you could look at it either way. Still in the top uh, 32 stadiums in the country. Did I math that right? Yes, you did. Okay. Yep. Yay me. There you go. Uh, we are going to take a break. We're going to come back, and Josh and I are going to talk about movies for a bit. Hell yeah. I love this. Movie Talk is coming up on The Connor Happer Show, 1620 The Zone. The Connor Happer Show. Follow us on Twitter, at Happer Show, for all the latest news and views. We may even say something interesting once in a while. Unlikely. Really, guys? Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio, 1620 The Zone. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend, grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. I'm Omar Reese with NFL Network now on the Westwood One Radio Network. When the 2024 season kicks off, Kick Returns will be a bigger part of the game after league owners approved a huge kickoff overhaul. The new format aims to entice returns while maintaining player safety. It features the front lines of the kicking and return teams lining up across from each other at the receiving team's 40-yard line. They can't move until the ball hits the ground or a player inside a landing zone between the 20 and the goal line. Touchbacks will now come out to the 30. Some other news. The trade deadline was moved back a week after week nine now, and there will be two games on Christmas, which this year falls on a Wednesday. Elsewhere, the Titans agreeing to a four-year, $76 million contract with Legereus Sneed, finalizing his trade from the Chiefs. And Patriots owner Robert Kraft says he's open to trading the third overall pick, but adds, quote, one way or another, I'd like to see us get a top-rate young quarterback. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Heard the catchphrase that's sweeping the nation? Jackson Hue, yeah. People are saying Jackson Hue, yeah to Jackson Hewitt because they love saving money on tax prep. Do you love saving money? Then switch to Jackson Hewitt today and pay less than last year. Thousands of people have already made the switch. Why haven't you? Stop waiting and start filing. You won't get a better deal or a better catchphrase. All together now. Jackson Hue, yeah. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. 
eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze, and right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Are you ready to embrace warmer weather and score tickets hassle-free? Look no further than Tickets for Less. It's your local ticket headquarters right here in Omaha at 145th and West Center Road. Say goodbye to hidden fees and hello to transparent upfront pricing. Plus, use the promo code THEZONE at checkout and save big at ticketsforless.com. From sports to concerts and everything in between, TFL has you covered. If you have a question, call them today. 402-398-1999. With unrivaled customer service, every seat holds a story. Find yours and save with the code THEZONE. Zone now at ticketsforless.com. This should be the final segment of the Connor Haber show for the day. The boys are out in Vegas and uh, have already had to relocate, apparently. Yeah, apparently Nick was doing too much wild stuff <laughs> and they're like hey you need to you need to take this yep. child somewhere else <laughs> excuse me sir <laughs> no kids allowed yeah it's a 21 and over establishment but we will uh we will have a crossover with the boys mm-hmm. before they start on sportsmanlike conduct this afternoon live from the pool side in las vegas connor has promised to take his nips out on the video what yeah zone Scandal. tv is to be. i know i know Oh boy! Not sure if we have like blurring technology. <laughs> it's censored. We need to censor that. Yeah, we'll put a black bar up on the yep. video stream. It's inappropriate. This is a family radio station. That's right. All right. Well, I promised we would do this today, Josh, because I like talking movies with you. So let's do it. I like it's movie talking talk movies time. with anyone who's seen movies. Yeah, it's movie talk time. I don't get that often. So we begin. With your latest review of a new movie. That's right. You saw Roadhouse. I did. I did see Roadhouse, and many have asked my opinion on it. I'm always a little blown away when people are like, okay, should I watch this or not? And I'm like, okay, that's a lot of pressure for me. (laughs) I don't know you. I don't know what you like. Um, Is Conor McGregor as annoying as he looks in the trailer? Oh, if you think he's annoying in his... UFC persona. This is just that dialed up okay. to 11. Um, it is, it is roadhouse. It is a reboot. Uh, it does not take place in Jasper, Missouri. And, uh, um, Jake Gyllenhaal is Dalton. Uh, for some reason we felt it necessary to give Dalton a backstory. <laughs> that wasn't as necessary. an MMA fighter. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, and so, okay. 
the movie should not exist. Okay. Comma. However, the, the action's pretty good. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal has this really dry sense of humor. I like dry. Yeah. I, I thought I was going to hate this movie and I did not hate it. Well, again, we didn't need to do this. No one was asking for this. Sure. It is not, it's not a sequel. He's not Dalton's son. He's not, <laughs> this uh, is a straight remake. Yeah. And Hollywood loves to do this. Now we've put it in South Florida because it's a sexier locale than uh, Missouri. Is there a movie that's 40 years old that we can remake? Let's do Let's that. Let's do that. Uh, instead of thinking of our own ideas. Uh, it, how how closely does it stick to the original script? Um, I mean, it's in South Florida, obviously, and it's... Dalton is a bouncer for a bar. The bar is not the double deuce. Um, there are no rules of bouncing. Um, although he does, he does take some young bouncers under his wing, a la the first movie. Um, the town does seem to not want Dalton there. So I, uh -huh. I guess the broad stroke it follows, but I found myself surprised at how little it followed from the original Roadhouse. Interesting. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't hate the action's pretty good. There's some there's some comic relief there. It it all in all, it's not a total loss. And it's it, on it's on Amazon Prime. If you've got that already, like you're not really okay. out anything like you don't, don't have to go to the theater don't go to the theater you don't saying it's not at the theater the oh. director is oh. the director is pissed about that by the way because he was told this is going to the theater who's who was his executive clark hunt <laughs> there was a miscommunication between <laughs> me and the director i think this could have made some money in the theater like mm. i don't i don't know okay all so, right it's not terrible it's not great two and a half out of five stars right down the middle two and a half okay uh, I saw on an airplane, the creator. Have you seen the creator? I have not. It's on my list. I love Denzel Washington. So I'm, I'm always very curious what his son is up to. Um, this is the best sci-fi movie that I've seen in the last probably 10 years. I've heard a few people say that and it, it has me intrigued. It's so it's kind of, know... kind of a smart movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the movie Ex Machina? I do. I love that movie. Yeah, good. So this is sort of like, I don't want to say, it, it's almost like a spiritual sequel to Ex Machina. Okay. So it's basically that we've created humanoid AI. Then there was a, uh, a nuclear missile that was detonated by AI in America. So the United States bans AI. But Asia has not banned AI, and they still have these humanoid AI living there. And the U.S. is trying to eradicate them. And we we join up with um, the, the main character who is undercover in Asia. Okay. And, and okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a, seek, a super weapon that they've developed that's going to take out the U.S.'s capability to combat the AI. So it's, it is very heady. It's, it's very much – it is – Heavy on the science part of the science fiction. And Sturgill Simpson makes a cameo, which I love. I know. Um, but this is, it is super entertaining. The visual effects are like some of the best. The, okay. the, not at all the hokey stuff that, that you've seen in some recent things. I'm trying to think of the, the Netflix movie, Rebel Moon, which is just awful. Um, if you, I, I have heard it's awful. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a Zack Snyder joint, boom. right? I don't turn off movies. Like I will, I will stick it out and finish Same. everything. I couldn't finish Rebel Moon. Whoa! And I, they want to do more uh, of those. There's movies? another one. Yeah, it's it's coming out soon. But I uh, everything that Rebel Moon should have been the creator is okay. And the, this one's fan. on Hulu, right? Uh, I don't know. I okay. watched it on an airplane. Okay. Um, I loved it. I think it's really good. The acting is fantastic. The visual effects are great, and the story is so compelling for the age that we're in now of like sort of the dawn of the AI era. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just really good and really interesting. And it, it's one that's going to stick with you uh, after you watch it. And the, it's also the anti movie that we were talking about earlier. One that I've seen that I just don't want to watch again. This is one that'll get some replay. Okay. It's, it's that good. I okay. think it's, 
It's a solid four and a half. It's oh wow. Yeah, it's very very okay. good. Okay, it it's definitely on my list. I I haven't gotten it to it yet, but on your recommendation, I I might bump I might, I might bump it up a little. I would highly I'll recommend that you do that. Okay. Um. Okay. So, uh, upcoming movies. Do you have anything oh, else? Real Dune Two. Have you seen Dune? I have 2? seen Dune Two. What did you think? Because that's a, that's a in the same vein, a heady yeah. sci-fi movie. Mm-hmm. So I loved the first one so much. That I, I did not like the first. Oh, you one. didn't like the first I was, one. I thought it was kind of boring, kind of hard to follow. Oh. Even though I like the original Dune from the what the eighties or whatever. Uh, David Lynch. Yeah, the David Lynch one. Yeah. Oh man. I do not like that movie at all. No, no, it's bad. It's bad. Um, so I I enjoyed the first one so much that I went and read the books. Oh, okay. I, 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 not I read thought about that. I was like, I wonder if I could handle the books. So I read the books and really enjoyed the first two books in the Dune series. Um, and the third one is not so good. I have heard the third book is not good. Yeah. Uh, so I was very excited for this movie. And the second one is, I didn't like it as much as I liked the first one. I've watched oh, the really? first one probably three times. Already. Okay. Three or four times, maybe. I, I've really, really enjoyed it. The second one is is very good. They do change the story a bit from what the the books um, had laid out, but it's. I think it's still really good. I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I thought it was one of the best looking movies I have yeah. ever seen. Yeah, it's it's definitely got an aesthetic. And look, I have become a a big Timothy Chalamet fanboy. I think he's just oh really good. Uh, he's probably my favorite actor going right now. Um, everything he's in is just it. It seems to be good. Like everything he's in is a good movie. Okay, have you seen Wonka? Yeah. What did you think of that? I thought it was good. Okay, I've been scared to watch it. I liked Wonka. Like, it's, it's on. It's, it's on Max. Fun. It's on Max right now, and I'm like, ugh. Wonka's fun. I love. I the watched Gene it with Wilder my son. One. Yeah. And so I, this is. I hate the Johnny Depp one. This is the yeah. It's. I mean, you know, it's the Wonka backstory. Okay. It's, it's where he got his start. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was a lot of fun. Good movie. Okay. Watch it with your kid. They'll love it. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have that creepiness factor that the, the other one or the original. Yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory does. Um, yeah, I really liked it. But okay. uh, you know, me and Tim, if he's in it, I'm probably going to watch it. Uh, upcoming movies, please. You got any upcoming movies that you're stoked about? Oh, um, I am very excited about, uh, and I, I know this is going to say a lot about me. I'm excited for Godzilla versus King Kong this weekend. This was my question. Are you going to apologize for Godzilla King Kong, the new empire? Why do I need to apologize for it? Cause I think it's going to be bad. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's just two monsters fighting for, <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I want. I don't okay. want it to be this right. heady. I, every time I've watched some of the newer Godzilla movies, I've always about halfway through the movie said, I don't care about these people. Just let the monsters fight each other. <laughs> and apparently that's what we're getting this time around. And uh, I could not be more excited. Apparently there's a, there's a new Kong that's even bigger than King Kong. Oh, Is that the story? Apparently. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is I just want I just want to sit there and eat a trash bag of popcorn yep. and watch stuff explode. I don't normally feel that way, but with Godzilla versus King Kong, I think that's when it's at its best. I don't know. I've got to have some plot. I I, I got to have some plot to my movie. I completely understand that. So, well, I'm glad you're excited for it. Mm-hmm. It's not one that I will be taking in. Uh coming up, oh, this is one I wanted to get your your preliminary thoughts on. Have you seen the trailers for Monkey Man? Uh, I I have, and I've also we, seen the reviews for Monkey Man. Do we believe Dev Patel as an action star? I did not, but then I read the reviews for Monkey Man, which are like, oh my gosh, if you loved John Wick, this is just John Wick. Okay. And uh, yeah, all in. Shut up and take my money. Like, all right. That's that's all you needed to say. Maybe, maybe it does have Charlotte Copley, who I also like. Uh, he is the South African actor. Who was in uh, District Nine? Uh, he was in. He's been in all those Neil Blomkamp movies. Okay. Um, yeah, it was really good. Uh, well, Elysium. He's the bad guy in Elysium. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. So maybe we'll be checking that. And then uh, April twelfth, probably the movie so far that I'm most excited for this year. I am an A twenty four homer. Great studio putting out great movies. They put out weird movies, and I love weird movies. 
Three of them got nominated for Best Picture last year. Civil War, April 12th. Controversial. Nick Offerman, Kirsten Dunst. I think this is going to be like mind blowing. It now, uh, can you can you quickly lay out the plot? Uh, for, for this is from the director as, of Ex Machina. Yeah, yeah. As I understand it, there are three factions that have divided the U.S. The Western forces of Texas and California, uh, the traditional United States, which is essentially the Eastern Seaboard, and then there's like a Central forces, and the and there's a civil war happening basically and that you know nobody knows who's on what side because nobody can tell anybody apart um and it it's just sort of an exploration of what happens when the society becomes irreparably divided yes and many people are saying that uh sorry I was reading an email uh trying to figure out when the guys are going to be ready to go we have uh, we have plenty of time uh a lot of people think this is a dangerous idea to put out mm. uh, as if uh, as if Americans haven't already thought of this in our more divided than ever society. Uh, I've heard it's yeah. also I've heard it's also very violent. I'm sure that it is. Yes. Yeah, I would I would imagine nothing short of that. It's not um, straying away from uh, the horrors of this idea. Well, I mean, civil war is a, is a horrifying concept mm -hmm. right that you have to capture some of that somehow um and nick offerman as the president like give me more shoot it into my eyeballs <laughs> like that sounds amazing am i going to be able to take him seriously as the president i imagine i imagine, I imagine so. so he was very good in uh the last of us and some yep. other dramatic roles that he's had um but yeah it's super super looking forward to that one uh and then there's the movie rumors that we should get to rumors and the biggest rumor about rumors is happy Gilmore too. Oh, Oh, I thought there was a movie called rumors. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I have some questions. Okay. First of all, why? That's a good question. Now, now Adam Sandler uh, has, answer has, uh, probably a dollar sign at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, made a living off the, the last decade or so just bumming around with his friends for netflix and i i can't fault him for that that's a great life if you can carve that out for yourself also the origin point of this rumor is the actor who played shooter mcgavin yeah was told by adam sandler there's a script for it yep and he's now that's just... not he just dumped it out into the public. <laughs> That's not necessarily, hey, we're doing this and you can expect it to be on Netflix in 2025 or whatever. But this seems to be like an actor going into business for himself. Apparently, Dan Patrick has been contacted about playing himself in the movie. Okay, well, it's an Adam Sandler movie. I assume Dan Patrick's in it. Yes. So, I mean, I, I think it's beyond like, well, we're just kicking around ideas i think they're actually seriously considering this thing and what i'm wondering is like what is there left to tell in the happy gilmore story and the audacity to announce this mere weeks after chubbs's death like is uh please don't do like a rocky five <sighs> where He's training a young happy golfer. is now the trainer of some hockey player who wants to become a golfer or like oh wouldn't know, it be even worse a if cricketer? it was like an actual nhl player yeah it was like hey my, my nhl career ended yeah so let's not do that no. please like there are some sacred cows are there not there are things we just shouldn't touch yeah now, I understand that that if you put that out on Netflix, pe uh, many, many, many people would click play on it. It would probably be like the most watched Netflix movie of all time or whatever, yeah. whatever that means, which is a number that no one knows. <laughs> they can say anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number one in the U.S. Prove it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the, the guys are connected if whenever we want to wind this down. Now, we have the show hostage right now. Oh, we do. So, so we can go whenever as long as we want. Okay. Last point about happy Gilmore two is that 
we often see these late arriving sequels and they're terrible. Yes. Th- this happens a lot. I recently watched for the first time Dumb and Dumber 2. Which was exactly the one I was going to point to. A beloved movie from the 90s that was super funny, that they tried to recapture the magic. Everybody came back for it, so you're like, okay, I might be on board with this original writer, director, stars. Like, it's got everything that I want. Fairly Brothers lost their fastball. They did. They did. The the humor window has shifted away from where they live. mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Yo on YouTube says Super Troopers 2, Anchorman 2, Zoolander 2, all bad. All yeah. bad. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. They're all bad. So uh, I would advise against doing it, but I understand that the, the the dollars would probably make it hard to say no to doing it. Absolutely. So, I, I I hate it, but I get it. Yeah. We're, we're probably going to see a happy Gilmore 2 sooner rather than later. Definitely. All right. Let's end the show. Let's get to the crossover. Well, well, we got the we got the polls. Oh, we got the polls. Yeah, I forgot we got to update the polls. Tell people what to watch. We got to tell people what to watch. I didn't want to start that until we got the green light Sorry. from the boys in Vegas. My goodness, I'm just uh, trying to get out of here too quickly. Poll questions up at Happer Show. Uh, you still have time to vote on these if you'd like to. Strawberry milkshake, yes or no? Fifty-eight percent of the audience said yes. Strawberry hmm. milkshake. No, I'm out. I voted no. Is a frosty a milkshake? I believe this is the most voted on poll of the day. I say yes. Uh, I I don't. I say no. no. And 62% of the audience agreed with me on that one. Uh, singular form of white socks. White socks or white sock. 50.8% of the Ooh. audience says white sock. Mm, that's a, a tight one. With a K, yeah. And uh, finally, oh, I guess this is the most voted on poll question of the day. I'm sorry. Who passes out first in Vegas, Connor, Nick, or Josh? With a whopping 48% of the vote, young Nick Ooh. has been uh, the winner or the loser of that poll, whatever yeah. your life perspective is. I think he's a one seed, but he could be upset by the two seed, Josh. Ooh, wow, okay. Uh, Peterson did comment. He said, is this going to bed first? Because if this is going to bed first, I'm going to go to bed first. <laughs> See, I knew yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally, what to watch tonight? We have the NIT quarterfinals. Are you in on the NIT? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, UNLV versus Seton Hall at six o'clock on ESPN two. Winner plays Georgia. VCU versus Utah eight o'clock. Same channel. Winner plays Indiana State in the NIT quarterfinal. CBI championship is tonight. Well, not even tonight. In oh. a matter of hours, four o'clock on ESPN. <laughs> what a start two. time! <laughs> High Point versus Seattle. Oh. Creating connection and uh, CIT championship is also tonight, six o'clock. Purdue Fort Wayne versus Norfolk State. Oh, the Mastodons against the Spartans. Are uh-huh. you kidding me? Now, this is tricky because it's not on TV. Weird, but it is a postseason basketball tournament. Is it streamed anywhere? I, uh, not that I could find. I'm sure it is, but uh, are just, you going to stream it on the CIT website? Maybe. Uh, NBA doubleheader on ESPN, Clippers Suns at 6.30, followed, uh, I'm sorry, Clippers Sixers at 6.30, Suns Nuggets at 9 o'clock, and uh, on MLB Network, they got their big preview today, 6 o'clock, it's the NL preview, 7 o'clock, it's the AL preview, and uh, they have a prediction special tonight at 8 o'clock, John. Okay, well, thank you very much, Josh. Thank you. Uh, The crossover is next live from the host coffee studio this is 1620 the zone there's no better thing than to help others in their time of need john bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com anyone can register regardless of age or medical condition donor hearts and lungs save lives donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives 